Yo, what's up, Cassilee? First one in, let's go. We got Eric in here too. Hello, hello. What's up, Brian? Football fan, Evan. Welcome in, welcome in. The first five people all said yo, so we're off to a good start. <laughs> Yo, Kaiser with the notification squad, let's go. I'm doing well, football fan. I've been really enjoying the new season. What's up, Randy? Il Bacello, 907 Phil and Kids, hello, hello. I know, Phil, you've probably got to be happy by the amount of Master League that's coming up this season. Metal Burst, hello. Monkey Ox, says, I'm so happy. Oh, that's awesome, man. What's going on? Chad, this is the first tournament of the World of Wonders meta. But... But there's a catch. There's a catch. Yo, what's up, MEJP? I know MEJP is probably running some absolute spice right now. What's up, Madrid? Look less. Phenom Spectre. Hello. What's up, everybody? Oh, man. I'm excited. All right. And we are a go. Okay. Because the new season started so close to this regional beginning, um, only some of the new stuff is allowed. So if Amon had a move that got buffed, like Hakamo'o already having Brick Break, Mantine already having Water Pulse, those are eligible. But Mons that got new moves, because the new, the season started so close to when Team Lockins were. So, like, Psycho Cut Gallade, unfortunately, isn't eligible for this one. But, Giratina Origin is eligible for the first time. Brick Break Hakamo'o is eligible. Water Pulse Mantine is eligible. So, we'll get to see the start of the World of Wonders meta. Which I am very excited for. But yeah, the uh, move updates went live, I believe, right at almost the exact time when Team Lockins closed. So it kind of made it hard for them to like add new moves to stuff. But the good news is, is we are going to get to see... Yeah, Gallade is so much fun. Gallade is so much fun. I love Gallade, man. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. We have our first matchup of the day. And look at that, chat. A Water Pulse Mantine sighting. Registeel, regular Whizcash, Lickitung, Shadow Dragonair. Yo, what's up, Steve? Welcome in. Yo, what's up, Mark? Shadow Dragonair, of course, that also got buffed. Night Slash Annihilate and the Water Pulse Mantine. I'm excited to see how Water Pulse Mantine does. And I'm excited to see if the Aqua Tail buff helps Shadow Dragonair. That's awesome, Eric. Yeah. Shadow Gallade, like, it's tough to use, but it's so fun. And then we have, ooh, a Zoomeril with Ice Beam Player Up, another Shadow Dragonair, a Sableye, a Vigoroth, Shadow Alolan Sandslash on Shadow Claw, and Superior with Leaf Tornado. Okay. Yeah, the uh, streams took a little bit of a hiatus because I've been putting out videos like crazy. But we're in for a nice long stream today with the uh, Utrecht special event. All right, they're locked in. Sandodu versus Guido. Game number one, Azumar Elite into the Annihilate. That's definitely not what Sandodu was hoping to see. Sandodu is going to save switch into the Registeel. We see a counter switch into the Vigoroth, but Vigoroth is going to have to give up a ton of shields here. This is not ideal for Guido. Guido's team extremely soft to Registeel. Sandodu taking advantage of that fact. The body slam is going to connect. Ready Steel shaking off that damage like it's nothing. No baits here. Not going for the Zap Cannon. Full sending the Focus Blast. Guido's thinking about it. Guido calls the bait. It's the Focus Blast. And now this Vigoroth is getting lock on farm down. So switch advantage is one. And with that, that should just be game over. Uh, this is day one. This is day one. That should just be game over here. As now, it's going to be Lickitung on the Azumarill and Annihilate on the Shadow Alolan Sand Slash. Guido basically just in a lost position from the start because his line is incredibly weak to Registeel. The Zap Cannon is shielded and gets the debuff as well. Guido, look into the skies, but there's no one that can save him from the wrath of this Registeel. This is a debuff player up into the Reggie. I think Reggie can actually hang on here. Reggie does hang on. And makes another Zap Cannon. Oh no. It's all going wrong for Guido here. He's double shielding the Azumarill. Do we see another debuff? 
We do see another debuff. He gets the farm down. His energy's double debuffed. When he sees the Licky, he'll have to switch out. This is a double debuffed play rough. This is just going to do absolutely no damage. And send Dodu is just win. Just the game is completely won the moment he sees that as there's the Annihilate. And Annihilate just very, very comfortably no shields everything and farms all the way down and takes game one. Yeah, I guess he could have switched in the A slash, but he's on Powder Snow, and with Powder Snow, it's actually very awkward going up against the Reggie. Like, if he was on Shadow Claw, he potentially could have switched it in, but he's on Powder Snow, and the Powder Snows just do nothing to Reggie. Yo, what's up, Mark? Favorite change so far? Ooh. Probably Shadow Gallade. That thing is too fun. Do you think they'll learn the lesson of Bad Shuggle? Probably not. And he does not get the farm down. A really unfortunate start for Guido. Guido winning the lead, but just having absolutely nothing for the Reggie Steel save switch. And Sendodu not only gets the win, but gets the two shield flex as well. Oh my goodness. That is absolutely brutal right there. You just hate to see it. So Sendodu, you have to imagine Reggie's coming back. And for Guido, he has to adjust. He has some Pokemon. Like, the Superior can win the twos. Since, especially since it does have Leaf Tornado. The Sableye can hold its own because you can survive a Zap Cannon. So as long as you don't get chipped first. Works out pretty well. But he's going to need answers for this Reggie. Because that was brutal in Game 1. We've got lock here. Game number 2. Sableye into the Annihilate. A very, very good lead. And if Sendodu sends in the Registeel... I imagine he's just going to stay in with the Sableye. <laughs> MBJP. Oh, Mega Lol, dude. The foul play is going to connect. He now sends in the Shadow Dragonair. Going for the Focus Blast. Not going to try and go for the debuff. Just wanting the damage here. Committing the shield. This is a situation where the Aqua Tail buff... We will get to see Aqua Tail, of course, now having five more base damage. And it's situations like these where it could be helpful. Guido farming up, going for the Aqua Tail. Is this going to be enough to knock out here? I believe Reggie's still going to hang on. The Aqua Tail into the Reggie. The Reggie does still hang on, makes it to another Focus Blast. And Guido in a pretty awkward position here where he does need switch advantage. He lets the Focus Blast go. That does massive damage. Can he get this farm down? It's going to be a race. And he does get the farm down. That's important for Guido. He keeps switch advantage. In comes the Annihilate. Annihilate will be met with the Aqua Tail. Aqua Tail. Yo, what's up, Mini Coke? Uh, we are starting from day number one. Yo, what's up, Jolly? Yeah, we are starting from day number one. And he's looking to set in the Lincoln Tug, but there's the Vigoroth in the back. With careful energy management, this is playable here. But it's going to be very tough. He has an energy advantage, and he has a shield advantage. And that's what you need to be able to fight back in a situation like this, where the alignment is exceedingly, exceedingly poor. So he is going to fire off these body slams. The body slams not doing a whole lot, that's for sure. Ooh, blue raid guy. I would say whatever you think that you will get the most value out of. Like, if you think, you know what? Heatran fills a missing spot in my Master League roster. You can go for that. But if you're thinking, you know what? I kind of have good Dialga counters. Then you can always build it for raids. So, hey, have a good one, Jolly. I appreciate you stopping in, homie. And I appreciate the kind words. He's looking for the farm down. He does not want to risk it. He does not want to risk it. The question is, can Annihilate clutch this? Annihilate doesn't have a lot of energy here. In comes the Annihilate. This Rock Slide has to be respected or he's getting farmed down. Uh, Lickitung is stronger than ever, you know, and so that's part of why it disappeared. Clocks up. In comes the Sableye. Oh, I don't even think a... I don't even think a bait wins in this game. I think he just has to full send. He builds up to the back-to-back -back Night Slashes, but he's not getting to the big move. Guido's thinking about it. He shields... Even with a boost, the Night Slash doesn't KO, and he just doesn't get there. He gets the boost! But this doesn't KO. This doesn't KO. This doesn't KO. <laughs> oh, he gets the boost, but it's not enough. Guido, able to make the adjustment. And he is able to even up the series here at 1-1. One 
So a nice adjustment there, because that ready steal was too much of a problem, but he switched it up and brought Sableye and the Dragonair, and it worked out a lot better for him. Now for game number three, do we see an adjustment here from Sandodu? Oh, we have lock-ins here. Shadow Dragonair versus the Registeel. Not an amazing lead for Guido here. Rankwood Basti. Oh, my goodness. I uh, can't wait for you to build that and then be like, all right, we're going to the Master League or something. <laughs> or the Ultra League. Dragonair, of course, with the pacing advantage. Aqua Tail is going to connect into the Registeel. Dragonair continuing to farm. There's not really anything you want to catch a Focus Blast on on this team. Guido going to commit the shield, but the uncomfortable thing as the Dragonair is Reggie can force two shields without giving up one itself. Like, Reggie can shield this Aqua Tail if it wants to preserve some health. He goes for the Aqua Tail. Looks like that was within one turn, possibly charge attack priority. Yo, what's up, OG? I appreciate that, homie. Thank you so much. Was that charge attack priority? It was charge attack priority. Guido can double shield and just farm down here if he wants to. He does have that ability. He is going to double shield. I expect a pivot here from Sandodu. And we do see it. In comes the Annihilate. Oh, boy. This will be interesting. The Annihilate going to be met with the Aqua Tail. He hasn't shielded anything all game. He uses the shield here. In comes the Superior. Superior running Leaf Tornado. But it's not going to be able to make it to the Leaf Tornado before the Shadow Ball is reached. And no shields left for the Superior. This is going to do quite a lot of damage. Yo, what's up, Day in the Life? Welcome in, homie. The Shadow Ball connects. Heavy damage onto Superior. Superior over farming, which makes me think he's going for the Frenzy Plant. As if you were going for the debuff move, you'd want to throw it sooner. The Frenzy Plant does get shielded. Sandodu with the right call. He gets the farm down. And now there's nothing. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is looking really dire for Guido here. Guido has to bring in the Dragonair, but the Dragonair is behind on energy and threw energy into the Annihilate. Sends in the Vigoroth. This is Vigoroth's absolute nightmare matchup. The Vigoroth, these counters are double resisted. The Body Slam is double resisted. Has to make it all the way up to a Rock Slide to even do single resisted damage. Annihilate continuing to farm. This Body Slam will get the Annihilate low, but it will not be enough to knock out. This is double resisted damage. Body Slam into the Annihilate. Annihilate not phased whatsoever. The switch into the Dragonair trying for the snipe, but it's unsuccessful. The Night Slash is reached. Annihilate putting in massive work against Guido's team. The Night Slash gets the Dragonair low. In comes the Mantine. Mantine is going to get a farm down here. And now, will he go for the Aerial Ace or is the Water Pulse needed? He's building up. He's going for the Water Pulse. And we get to see one of the move updates from the World of Wonder season. Water Pulse on the Mantine, knocking out the Vigoroth. And Sandodu is able to take the series two games to one. Very nicely done there by Sandodu. Guido had a nice adjustment in game number two there to force the game three, but it was, it it just ended up being really tough. That Annihilate put in so much work and he was kind of forced to stay into a bad lead and going down two shields, Annihilate and the two to zeros, just really, really tough. And now we get to take a look at our next competitors here. We have Snowman versus Triptondo. Triptondo with the Shadow Gligar, Shadow Dragonair, another buffed Pokemon, Annihilate, Dugong, Cresselia, and Registeel. And Snowman with the Registeel, Azumarill, Shadow Gligar, Lickitung, Annihilate, and the Shadow Dragonair. So dueling Shadow Dragonairs, dueling Annihilates, dueling Gligars, and dueling Registeels. I'm excited for this matchup. This will be a good one. All right, let's take a look here. Triptondo, the move sets Night Slash on the Annihilate. I did, Thomas. I've been working nearly the whole time, just working on getting videos out, but it's been a lot of fun. Future Sight on that Cresselia. Pretty standard move sets across the board outside of that. So we pan over to the opponent, Snowman, Az Azumarill on the Ice Beam and the Play Rough. Like a tongue standard, Night Slash Annihilate, and Dragonair standard there. This should be a good matchup. Uh, both these competitors have competed at quite a few regionals previously. I appreciate that emo. I am I am one of, well, uh, this is the European circuit. I uh, cast for the American circuit, but yeah, I uh, did get to cast the Charlotte and the Portland regionals earlier this, this year. So I am technically an official play Pokemon caster. 
which has been a long time coming and I'm very happy about it. So yo, what's up, Brandon? Welcome in, homie. Could you, yeah, we uh, had some friends over yesterday to uh, a couple days late uh, celebrate my wife's birthday, which was a lot of fun. So, yo, what's up, legendary? How's it going? When will I cast the next regional? Um, I think I was only brought on for those two this season because I don't know how to respond to emails in a timely fashion, but I should be on more next season. <laughs> So this is this is entirely operator error me not being on anymore because it turns out that uh, checking your email is an important thing that I'm bad at doing. So operator error on that one. I should hopefully be on more next season. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I will check my email more frequently next time. Yo, what's up, Jay Hood? Hey, you're good, man. Yeah, I uh, saw him. He was he was streaming for a bit, which which was exciting. I hope he's able to get back into that mo more consistently. Oh, yo, I love the the, the plushes here, the Ursaluna and the Mudkip. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. All right. Oh, looks like we got lock-ins. Game number one. We've got the Battle of Shadow Gligars. Let's take a peek in the back. Oh man, switch advantage matters so much here. There's an Annihilate and a Lickitung, and there's a Cresselia and a Registeel. Two incredibly strong cores that both really need switch advantage. Yo, what's up, Tiago? For ML, I think it'll be better. I still don't think it'll be like top meta, but I think it'll be better. This will probably come down to who wins charge attack priority in this matchup, or who's willing to go down a shield. The Aerial Ace is going to connect. They'll both, of course, reach this Aerial Ace at the exact same time. Charge attack priority, and Snowman is going to win charge attack priority. Triptondo is choosing to let this go. He's giving up switch advantage, but in doing so, oh boy. Snowman knows he cannot pivot here. He needs this on the Lickitung. Shadow Gligar decides to go for the Aerial Ace, just getting the damage that he can. Did not commit to the dig. The Aerial Ace is going to connect into Cresselia. Cresselia continuing to try and farm down. Can Gligar hang on? Oh, worried about Gligar making it to another Aerial Ace. Going for the Grass Knot. And Snowman, more than happy to let this go. Because he can put the Lickitung on this and keep the Annihilate safe. In comes the Lickitung. My guess is we'll see a Future Sight and then a switch into the Registeel. But Registeel in the two shield versus Annihilate. It's a complete slaughter in favor of the Annihilate. Future Sight lands. In comes the Registeel. Guess what, Registeel? It's Annihilate in the back. And this is looking like game over here. As Triptondo is in a very, very difficult spot. Zap Cannon is going to be fired. We do see the shield from the Annihilate. Annihilate would take quite a lot of damage here. The Zap Cannon does get the attack drop. Continuing to farm, going for the Night Slash bait. Triptondo, two shields remaining, but where does he use his shields? He shields here and shields the bait. Snowman nodding, that's what he was hoping to see. If he wants to, he can now pace and make the Shadow Ball, and now he does. This Shadow Ball, even with the debuff, should be able to pick up a knockout here with one additional counter. We see the shield from Triptondo. Triptondo trying to get shields down, potentially stall out the switch timer as well, but he threw his energy. He doesn't have an ability to combo. Snowman can just farm down and Shadow Ball the Cresselia, and this game is just over. Another debuff is applied, but it's not going to save the Reggie. Goes for the Night Slash. Triptondo desperately trying to save that Reggie Steel, but it's not to be. Snowman is going to be able to pick up the knockout with the Night Slash. Switch into the Lickitung to reset the debuff. And this game is over. Game one win for Snowman. And that was a really tough go of it for Triptondo. Losing charge attack priority on the lead. He decides to go for energy on Cresselia, but it turns out switch advantage was absolutely everything as Registeel falls to the might of the Rage Monkey himself, Annihilate. So game one going to Snowman as the Body Slam will pick up the KO and Triptondo Definitely looking to make some adjustments in game number two. He has some very useful information now that his Gligar does lose charge attack priority in the mirror. So that is something that he will have to factor into the game plan where he won't try and play two CMP typically anymore because he knows that's not something that's going to go well for him. The 
battlers are getting locked in here. We have lock-ins. Registeel on the lead into the Annihilate. The Registeel is just a magnet for the Annihilate. We're going to see the save switch into the Shadow Dragon Air and a counter switch into Azumarill. Oh, man. The thing is, Snowman ran triple weak to Triptondo's Cresselia. Things could get very interesting here. Triple weak to the Cresselia means that Triptondo can potentially put in a ton of work in the endgame, especially if he's able to get shields down. Ice Beam deployed. We see the shield from Triptondo. Triptondo looking to potentially try and make a play for switch advantage, but if Snowman saves two shields for the Annihilate, this could get very uncomfortable very quickly, as this does not knock out. Oh no, Snowman, he's saving shields for the Annihilate. Annihilate's energy is good into everything on Triptondo's team. He's going for the Ice Beam. Triptondo has already committed. He has to commit again. He'll be able to farm up to back-to-back -back body slams before Azumarill makes it to the next Ice Beam, just due to how pacing works in this matchup. So Triptondo is going to be able to farm up. Ooh, just shy of the back-to-back -back there. I believe he could have got the back-to-back. We see the shield from the Azumarill. Does Triptondo go for a switch now? He does. Catching on that Registeel. Saving the Dragonair for later. The Azumarill basically in farm down range, but this is going to set up Annihilate with energy. And Annihilate with energy is just so incredibly deadly. Annihilate continuing to farm. Will make the Shadow Ball before the Zap Cannon is reached. This Shadow Ball. This will be tough. This will be really tough. Not able to apply a debuff yet. The Shadow Ball connects into the Registeel. Registeel hangs on, makes the Zap Cannon, and this will hurt. Snowman forced to commit a shield. It's a 66% chance of a minus one attack drop. The Zap Cannon gets shielded and no debuff for Triptondo. This is still an Annihilate at full attack power. This is going to be difficult. Triptondo does have energy on the Dragonair. Choosing to send in the Cresselia, though. Cresselia going to get hit with a super effective Shadow Ball, and this Shadow Ball is going to do so much damage. Shadow Ball is going to connect. Cresselia, so much damage taken. Oh no. Cresselia going for the Future Sight, but I think it's just too low now. It can just get farmed down by the Dragonair. Definitely not reading the Dragonair in the back as that's just going to be game over here, and Snowman is going to take it. He does make the Grass Knot on, like, 1 HP, but I don't think it's going to be a difference maker here. The Grass Knot is going to connect. In comes the Dragonair. Dragonair makes the Slam. Actually, hold on here. If he can have enough HP here... L let's see this Body Slam. Wait! He might pull this off! He does! He gets the farm down! Oh my! That looks doomed, but Triptondo takes it. He takes it. The stored energy everywhere. I thought sacrificing the Cresselia was the lose con, but he trusts in the Dragonair, makes the Grass Knot on one HP, and the combination of the Grass Knot plus the Body Slam is enough to get the Equalizer there. Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> what a game. I thought that was over. But Triptondo able to get the Equalizer, staying alive on the winner's side of the bracket. And we get to see a game number three. Let's go. Game number three, Registeel versus the Registeel. Registeel finally not on the Annihilate. Oh no, Snowman, he's so weak in the back to Cresselia. Focus Blast, Charge Attack Priority, Snowman again winning Charge Attack Priority. Right, Nandgate. I didn't think he was making a move on his Cresselia versus the Dragonair, but he gets the Grass Knot. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I agree, Mini Coke. Yeah, I, I will have to make some notes because I definitely want to make a part two. The question is, does he catch a Focus Blast onto Azu now? Oh, he does! He does! Oh, that's beautifully done. That's beautifully done by Snowman. He preserves it. He catches onto the Azu. He's trying to bait out the Cresselia here and does bait out the Cresselia. That is very, very well played by Snowman. Going for the play rough. Let's the Psycho cut through. 
Two Shield Cresselia is completely unfazed by this damage, understanding it's going to get stuck against a basically full health Ready Steel. The Ready Steel has a Focus Blast banked. Trip Tondo was only able to farm up like a couple extra lock ons before switching. So, Snowman down a shield, but I would definitely prefer to be him in this moment. Grass Knot is going to connect. Azumarill will continue to farm. As the Cresselia, you don't mind taking this play rough because, as you know, you're going to get stuck against that Ready Steel unless you try and pivot. Play rough connects into Cresselia. Cresselia continuing to farm, building up to 100 energy, the back-to-back -back Grass Knots. Only one shield left for Snowman, not going to use it here. This Grass Knot is going to connect into the Azum World and pick up the KO. In comes the Registeel. Registeel will be met with the Grass Knot. Grass Knot, not a concern for the Registeel. Registeel could potentially go for a Focus Blast lock-on farm down. That could potentially be a little bit interesting. Is going to go for the Focus Blast. Let's see if there is an attempt at an undercharge. Oh, just going for a great. The Focus Blast into Cresselia. Oh, it's still too much, and it will pick up the knockout. Wanted to get a couple extra lock-ons there. Two Shield Shadow Dragonair is going to be difficult for Snowman to get rid of. Because this Ready Steel, while it can pull... Oh, he tries for the catch! Wait! He tries for the catch! Can the Dragonair get the farm down here? It does! He doesn't get the Focus Blast! Oh my! This could get very interesting, folks. As Triptondo has two shields to hide behind. Once the Dragonair gets KO'd, there is no longer any remaining fast attack pressure. Triptondo commits the shield. He has to make it to the body slam and preserve enough health that he cannot get lock on farm down here. These Shadow Dragon Breaths are adding up. His Dragonair into the red makes it to the body slam. It comes down to this. Can Registeel potentially get the lock on farm down as Body Slam will pick up the KO. Back in comes the Registeel. Registeel going for the Focus Blast now. We will see the shield from Triptondo. Triptondo hoping that the Dragon Breaths plus the Aqua Tail will be enough to KO. This will be close. It's going to be a race here. Trying to make it to the Aqua Tail. He gets to the Aqua Tail. Does this KO? This is a situation where having that five extra base power could be the difference in the game. The Aqua Tail into the Ready Steel. Picks up the knockout and Trip Tondo takes it. What a close game. Oh my goodness. What a series there. Trip Tondo able to fight back and a sigh of relief there as he's able to advance. Beautiful plays here. And this is only like round two of Utrecht. It's unbelievable unbelievable stuff <laughs> i love these regionals man they're so good and he's got the plushes there oh look at tho and nighttime clash are casting let's go all right winners round one wheeland versus feldwebeck wheeland with the shadow shape Ooh, that's a cool pick yo max welcome in Hey chat, uh, uh, we're doing spoiler free, but Max, who's in jail right now, it, uh, competed at this this weekend. All right, Wheeland has Shadow Sableye, Skarmory, Whizcash, Lickitung, Annihilate, and Altaria. Feldwebeck, Shadow Gligar, Shadow Whizcash, Annihilate, Chargebug, Skarmory, and the Lickitung. Yeah, honestly, unbelievable battles to start a trip. Tondo playing out of his mind there. Ooh, I want to go back and take a look at the... T okay, Night Slash Annihilate. Pretty standard. Night Slash Annihilate. Shadow Sableye. Power Gem Foul Play. Pretty standard. Yo, what's up, Ken Bone? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday to you as well. And we have the uh, nut in the back. Yes. We are... We are spoiler free. We are spoiler free. But I will be popping off whenever they show Max on stream. <laughs> oh, that's a really tough lead for Wheeland, leading the Lickitung into the Skarmory. Gonna save switch into the Shadow Sableye, answered with the Lickitung. This is a bit unfortunate for the Shadow Sableye. Shadow Sableye is going to fire off the Foul Play. Shadow Foul Play actually does add up in this matchup compared to a regular Foul Play. The Shadow Foul Play is going to connect. Lickitung continuing to farm. Uh, we haven't seen a, a, a Hakamo yet. Dr. Ken Bone, but it is eligible for the tournament. 
I believe this is like the second or third round of battles we've shown so far, so it's still very early in the tournament. We see the Sableye committing a shield, now going for the foul play. I don't believe this foul play knocks out. It's close, but I believe Lickitung can survive here. Feldwebeck is going to let this go. The foul play connects, and it doesn't knock out. It doesn't knock out. He makes it to another foul play, putting pressure on the shield. Feldwebeck is going to commit the shield. If Wheelan wants, he will have the ability to force the switch advantage by shielding up the Power Whip as he just cannot get that farm down. Oh my goodness. Oh, he actually lets it go. He lets it go. And that's going to set up some really unfortunate alignment in this endgame. Sends in the Skarmory. But for Feldwebeck, he has the charge of bug and not playing for Switch. Looms large in this moment. Charge of bug continuing to farm. Going for the Brave Bird and Switch. We will see the shield by Feldwebeck choosing to preserve health on this charge of bug. The Switch into the Lickitung. Going to bank double X scissor and send in the Skarmory. Wheeland up a shield and has some stored energy here on the Lickitung, but it's still looking dire without switch advantage. Over farming massively, going for the body slam. Feldwebeck would love to tank some body slams before potentially firing off a Brave Bird here. The body slam is going to connect. Uh, What happened to the stream, bro? That is... Apparently, when they were broadcasting it... Okay, we're back. They had some production issues. We're back. We're back. Okay. I was like, that is not my internet. That is just how it how it recorded. So, apparently, they had some, like, broadcasting issues, but we're back. We're good. Yeah, it is uh, uh, Utrecht, I believe, in the Netherlands, if I'm not mistaken. And the Skarm... Oh, he's able to get the switch off. He's trying to switch. And he will make it to the double discharge. Whelan not able to get enough energy. And that's just going to be game. Yeah, Fresh. So for, for this particular tournament, because it started so close to, to the new season, if Mons already had moves that got buffed, like Hakamo already having the Brick Break and Mantine already having Water Pulse, they can use them. But for new Mon, like new moves on Mons, like Psycho Cut on Gallade, those were ineligible for these tournaments. So that is why for this particular tournament, the meta will look fairly similar just because the new move update happened at like 9 p.m. on Friday and that like in in Europe. And that's very close to when team lock-ins were due. So they clarified the rules there just so people wouldn't have to lock in mons that they haven't had practice with more or less. So I'm excited fresh. It feels like Shadow Charizard in that if someone is good at energy management, they are just going to dominate with it. I think Shadow Gallade is a Pokemon that's very easy to use poorly because it is extremely glassy. But when used well, it's unbelievable. All right, we have lock-ins. Oh, the Shadow Sableye is a magnet for that Lickitung. Oh, that is extremely unfortunate. We see the save switch into the Lickitung. And I think he's just going to bank energy and send in the Scarvery. Oh, no. Oh, no. It all goes wrong for Wheeland. As I believe he has his Skarm in the back again. And there's the Charger Bug for Feldwebeck. Oh, this is looking rough. This is looking very, very rough, chat. Going for the Sky Attack. I believe you need a Sky Attack plus a Brave Bird to win zeros here as a Skarmory, if I'm not mistaken. I think it can depend a little bit on IVs, though. Body Sam is going to connect. Ooh, throws on alignment, giving a Steel Wing for free. This will not knock out. We will see the No Shield from Feldwebeck. Licky going to be met with the Sky Attack. If he shields this, he can lick down and take switch. He's going to let this go. But even if he farms with, with Skarmory, I just don't see a path forward in this game for Wheeland, unfortunately. He uh, kept bringing the same line of three, but Feldwebeck just kept having amazing, amazing alignment there. Going for the Brave Bird and Dip. 
but this is just playing out basically identically to game number one, where you can just shield this, Skarm's forced to switch, you can just queue up a switch at this point, basically. In comes the Sableye. Goes for a discharge, you can see there that he meant to click the egg scissor just from how, how he reacted, so. <laughs> Yo, that's awesome, Alexander. Yeah, uh, you can see from from his like, oh, man, he uh he uh meant to click the X scissor because X scissor and discharge do the same amount of damage, but X scissor is cheaper. Like so, when both are neutral, there's never a reason to go for discharge ever. Paired up with Shadow for Alligator, nice. Yeah, Shadow for my only Shadow for Alligator is built for Ultra, so I'll have it for Ultra and I'll try it in Ultra. But unfortunately for Great, I only have the regular, and the regular is just a lot worse. Then the shadow. Sending back in the Skarmory. I mean, this look is just at 100 energy, man. This is just brutal. This is just brutal. This is a death by a thousand cuts. He ends up throwing on alignment twice, but realistically, it's not going to matter. The Skarmory has no way of getting the charge bug off the field. Yeah, he uh, cost himself a third body slam there by throwing out alignment twice, but it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. Goes to the sky attack. Easiest shield ever. And Feld Webeck takes it. <laughs> What's up, Goffs? Yeah, the VOD will hopefully be able to view afterwards. So I have ads set to the most minimal setting possible because... So hopefully they should be very unintrusive. And Feld Webeck is able to take it. All right, I'm gonna make sure this is, yo, let's go to 1080 real quick. Yeah, HD battles. Water Pulse, actually got a Mantine. We did see someone run it, yes. All right, we have Status Stan versus Chun. Chun running his signature Lorantis chat. He runs this at almost every regional. He has Umbreon, Lorantis, Annihilate, Altaria, and then the, the two fish, Dugong, and Lantern. And for Status Stan, Mantine, Chargebug, Whizcash, Lickitung, Annihilate, and Shadow, Alolan, Sandslash. Honestly, Lorantis looks kind of nice here. Lorantis looks kind of nice here. Hold on. They uh, didn't show us movesets, so we'll have to see the movesets as we go. Altaria on the lead into the charge bug. This will typically favor the Altaria more often than not. Let's take a peek in the back. There's Umbreon in the back and the Annihilate. Oh, boy. If Stan is running Night Slash on his Annihilate, then Annihilate actually loses to Umbreon. But yeah, so Chun benching the signature Lorantis in game number one. Able to land the discharge, which is very helpful. Going for the Sky Attack. Sky Attack does not knock out here. Charge Bug will be able to withstand this damage. We see the shield protecting in case it's a Moon Blast. Stan looking to farm, going for the Discharge. Discharge does not knock out, but it will get the Altaria deep into the red. So Chun now has a choice. He's choosing to let this go, as that's not going to be enough to knock out. He should be able to make it to the Sky Attack and does get there. Stan is already shielded once. Does he want a double shield for alignment? No, he lets it go and Altaria wins lead. I wouldn't be surprised to see him send in Annihilate and just go for a counter farm down here. As, oh, he actually brings in the Lickitung. But this is going to get stuck on the Umbreon now. Well, he's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. He's trying to make a team prediction. He's thinking about it. Does he bring in the hard counter? He does. In comes the Annihilate. Oh, he is on Night Slash. He's on Night Slash. The Annihilate is completely walled by the Umbreon. Yo, what's up, Jocks? Welcome in, homie. And Kurt, yes, we are covering both days today. Although I have a bit of a surprise about day two. Y'all will have to remind me. I have a bit of a surprise about day number two. Which I think y'all will enjoy. But yeah, the Shadow Ball. Umbreon is very, very okay with this. Yes, Dragoon. Tune running his signature Lorantis. Foul play connects. We'll have to throw... 
Night Slash. Oh, this would be really borderline whether it KOs or not. And it does it! Oh! <laughs> he gets the counter down with an Ilave. Oh no. Oh no. And Chun is on Ice Punch. Interesting. Chun saying, no, 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 no. Not so fast about Unite Slashers. I'm on Ice Punch. Yo, what's up, Dr. Stalemate? Also, chat, at some point tomorrow, I will have to upload. I have uncovered an absolute beast of a squad today against some pretty good competition because I've kept a pretty decent win rate. I went 20 and 5 today. I went 20 and 5 today. With what I think is one of the most underrated Pokemon. In the open grade league meta at the current moment. Yeah. It was it was a good day of battles. It was a good day of battles. I went I went 20 and 5. 20 and 5. No reveal is crazy. Well, I'll be posting it tomorrow. Yeah, I will post that video tomorrow. I'll, I will post that video tomorrow. Yeah. You should have seen the ridiculous glazing in the Discord. It's not my fault it's the best mod in the meta, Executor. Yeah, I got... Um, I'm at 55 wins for 80 losses. So I, I started the day 35 out of 55 and then went 20 and 5 today. I'm in rank 14. I'm in rank 14. I mean, if y'all are on the Discord, I have been hyping it up all day in the Discord. But... <laughs> all right, he's leading Altari again into the Mantine. The question is, what is the moveset on the Mantine? Is Stan opting for something like the Water Pulse and giving up the Ice Beam? We'll have to see. Oh, he's on... Oh, he's on Bubble Beam and Aerial Ace. So this is a neutral matchup now, which means Altari can probably win it. Altaria can probably win it. Yeah. Altaria can probably win this now. Oh, he's full set of the Moon Blast here. And Stan calls it. Stan calls it. Oh my goodness. The Moon Blast connects. No debuff to be found. But now Chun, I believe, can tank two Aerial Aces and farm down. I would have to imagine. Unless, actually, this will be close. This will be close. This will be close. This will be close. Aerial oh, that actually... Bro, how does Mantine still win the zeros here with no Ice Beam? That's crazy. Uh, Ao, they do know each other's movesets, yes. They uh, do know each other's movesets. They do know each other's movesets. He snipes with the Annihilate to get an energy head start. So Chun is forced to bring in the Lantern. Water Gun Lantern by Chun. This is really interesting. This is really interesting. This is really, really interesting. Ice Beam Mantine is Bozo now. <laughs> Bro, why did it win the zeros? I mean, I guess it just... Altaria is supposed to be the uh, neutral king. Ooh, choosing to bait with the Surf. Surf does not knock out here. It might set up a nice farm, though. We'll have to see. It gets him low. Can he get it low and then snipe with the ape? Oh, no. He just stays in and farms down. Yeah, Chun is known for running very anti-meta stuff. Very anti-meta stuff. Sends in the Mantine to switch to the Annihilate. Answered by the Charger Bug. Annihilate can win ones here, but twos, I imagine, has to favor the Charger Bug. He baits and Stan calls it immediately. <laughs> That's bravery there by Stan. You can see him, him wince there for a second. You can see him wins there for a second. He's like, oh, please. Oh, Stan's baiting. And he gets the shield from Chun. Oh, that's a double resisted bait. And it works out. Oh, no. The double resisted bait. 
Maintain is really HP weighted, and its bulk is pretty decent for its most one-turn moves. That's fair, that's fair. I guess I just probably need to run more Mantine then. Yeah, that that immediate call was confidence. I like it. No doubt in how he plays. Shielding two X scissors, bro, I would be crying. I would be shedding grown man tears. I would be shedding grown man tears. <laughs> oh man. He for sure has to throw the surf here. And the question is, it'll come down to water guns. Yeah, but he can just shield. He can just shield. Yeah. Yep. And Stan gets the equalizer. Stan is the equalizer. But yeah, after this battle, if y'all want, someone said that uh, they would gift five memberships to the community if you leak the mod you used for 20 and 5. For that, I will just leak the whole team. As long as y'all promise to still watch the video, because there are some crazy, crazy games in there of me overcoming matchups that I had zero business winning. <laughs> but after, after this best of three, after this best of three, And Chun was top four in Bochum. Yo, what's up, man? You'll have fun with Sanitai Herdier? Nice. I was torn between that and Furfru for what I should try. I, I tried Furfru and I surprisingly had a lot of fun with it. And it was better than I expected. Ooh, Licky into Lantern. That's tough for Chun. That's tough for Chun. Thing is, Altaria is very good in the back for Chun. Sand Attack Hippo. Yes, I have a high rank shadow built for Ultra. I'm excited for Ultra Premier. The Bolt lands. Stan. Not baiting. Let's it go. Yes, one Isimo. I will be covering both days today. I will be covering both days today. The Save Switch Annihilate. Responding with the Charge Bug. This is what Chun needed. Very nicely timed by Chun. Full sending the Shadow Ball. Yo, what's up, Dom? So welcome in, homie. Gets the shield from Stan. I think he's just going to full send now. Because he is so used to, like... Like, Chun might expect him to bait again. Although he's at back-to-back. -back, he's no reason to bait. But yeah, Chun is going to let it go. Chun's like, I refuse to shield any more X's, bro. Oh, it didn't KO! He was forced to throw! It didn't KO! The Annihilate commits the shield. He now has the Shadow Ball. And he throws one counter. Perfect mechanics by Tune. Oh, I was not expecting it to live that. Let's go Annihilate. The Shadow Ball connects. Big damage onto that Charger Bug. In comes the Annihilate, but stands on Night Slash, which means Altaria is a massive, massive problem. Yo, what's up, Samir? Oh, that's pain, homie. That's pain. Sending in the Lantern. Oh, he, he saves the move. Sends in the Altaria. And this should just be a win. This should just be a win for Chun. They should, in my view, basically just be game over. Like, he has a lot of energy on the... Like, Stan does have energy everywhere, but Chun has a move. I think... Well... This will be closer than I'm thinking it will be. I think I'd rather be Chun in this moment because you're not in Night Slash range. He has to ball to get a KO here. And he's just going to Night Slash right away. Does he know he's short? He shields the Night Slash. Hold on. He shields the Night Slash. Does he boost? He does not boost. Because that is not Night Slash range. A Night Slash doesn't knock out there. Night Slash does not do a lot of damage. Night Slash does not do a lot of damage. He goes for the Night Slash. Like, it'll now get the Altaria low, but Altaria should be able to survive this. Yep, it does. The pivot. Oh, he tries for the bolt. He tries for the bolt. No. He didn't go for the surf. We got to look that up. How much does the surf do? We got to look that up. Surf is 36.4, man. That's within 36.4, bro. 
That's within 36.4. Oh no. Oh no. That's definitely within 36.4, bro. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. With the DBs, it would have KO'd, but he uh he he tried to commit to the bolt. That's unfortunate. Yo, what's up, Melissa? Welcome in. Unfortunate, but Chun can still do well in the losers bracket. So he's not out of it yet. Pokey Squark versus Slow King. A rare, rare Claude Zire sighting. Claude Zire. Shadow Polyrath. Honestly, pretty rare at this point as well. Yeah, what's up, Steve? Charger Bug, Licky, Sableye, Shadow Alolan, Sandslash, and Slow King with that Crest Reggie core. Annihilate. A regular Gligar. A bit of a surprise, as the Shadow is typically preferred. The Dragonair and the Dugong. The Clodsire on Mudshot and Stone Edge. Earthquake is always, but that way we know. Standard Polyrath, Standard Sableye, Standard A-Slash. Oh yes, the Team Leak. It's Shadow Magnazone, Shadow Gligar, and then Hakamo'o in the back. If you're a little worried about being too weak to Gligar, you can run Gudra in place of the Hakamo'o. But yeah, Shadow Magnazone, Shadow Gligar, and Hakamo'o. That team was wicked. Uh, yes, uh, Buffter, they did. So with the move updates, anything that has the move already, like Water Pulse Mantine, was eligible. Any new moves were ineligible because move updates went, went live at like 9 p.m. on Friday in Europe. And the tournament started Saturday morning, so Team Lockins, I believe, were, were closed by then. Uh, Volt Switch all the way. Volt Switch all the way. I, Metal Sound is kind of bad. But yeah, uh, Volt Switch for sure. Volt Switch for sure. But yeah, I went 20 and 5 with it today. It was very, very good. Yo! Yo! He's a man of his word with five gifties. Gifted to Devi, Jacob, Theo, Dr. Stalemate, and Fresh AF. If you just got a gift of membership from JD, don't forget to say thank you very much and enjoy the emos. Yo, much appreciated, homie. But yes, I went 20 and 5 with it today. The kind of a yeah mini coke uh the one that i run is a 15 12 14. <laughs> the uh, magnazone that i run is a 15 12 14 because i don't have anything better i run the most trash iv magnazone it's like 1489 it's 15 attack it is so bad yeah for gudra typically you want 122 attack so if you input your ivs into pv poke uh 122 attack uh, gives you a breakpoint versus Lickitung, where your DBs do four instead of three. Got the ring shadow. That's awesome, Melissa. It's so fun. It's so fun. All right. I'm going to do a bunch of sprays. And I will just put the jumping jacks for a stream when I'm doing Go Battle League. Because I'm trying to get through eight hours of footage here in less than eight hours. So... Yeah, uh, the 122 attack, the primary thing is it allows you to beat Lickitung, which is really nice. But yeah, so the, the original version of the team was Gudra, and then I tried Hakamo'o, and Hakamo'o is disgustingly good with, with, with Brick Break, dude. It's so good. Okay, a Future Sight Crest, Night Slash, and Iolape. We're going to see a lot of Gator and a lot of Hakamo'o. I'm excited to see this matchup. We got lock-ins. Lickitung versus Annihilate. Annihilate does typically have the advantage here. Metal Sound Bronzong, potentially in the future. Oh, we see a save switch into a Sableye. A bit slow to switch. Sends in the Gligar. And baiting out the Gligar is what Squark needs to free up the Charger Bug to potentially sweep at the back. 11-1-5. Uh, that for sure has the attack weight. Uh, if it gets to a decent CP... I would run the Sims compared to high rank and see like what you gain slash drop. Or if you run it compared to my 965. Because my 965, I feel like is a, I got it in a trade. It is a really nice middle ground of 
you do quite well matchup wise like you're dropping some stuff but you get some really nice gains and you win charge attack priority over a lot of so many pokemon fall in that 115 to 120 attack range so being out of there and guaranteeing cmp over stuff like figaroth swampert venusaur frostlass a variety of stuff like that is incredibly nice it's a Shadow Magnezone, Shadow Gligar, and Hakamo'o. But I was saying, if uh, people don't want to run as weak to opposing Gligar as I did, uh, they can run the the attack Gudra. But yeah, um, the Gligar, the Shadow Gligar is always the the safe switch there. Ooh, the pivot by Slowking. Goes for the Night Slash. Oh, he denies the energy. It KOs. It KOs. Oh my, Squark lost a lot of energy there. And now he's just going to spam out Night Slashes. He would love if Squark no-shielded here. Yeah, that's actually really good for Slowking. Because now this just goes to a war of attrition. He has to throw here or he makes another Night Slash. I think he just lets this go and just brings in Dugong. Because you don't want to put yourself in a position where you have no shields and they can just discharge you. You'll want to fully wait your clock because you'll have an ability to catch as needed. Hey, have fun always. Wiggly. I think that's a that's a pretty good meta read right there. I think that's a pretty good meta read, Goron. I agree. I agree. Plus, as we know, Lickitung is ever present. You can get... Ooh, choosing not to debuff. I mean, this doesn't knock out anyway, but choosing not to debuff. Now, this all comes down to counts. Does he know if he is now one volt switch off or two volt switches off? That's what this comes down to. He gets there. Oh, he didn't throw it. He didn't throw it. He switches into Gligar. He gets the catch! He gets the catch! He was worried about a, a potential catch, but it gets caught anyway. And now the Ice Shard KOs! It KOs and Slowkick takes it! Oh, he overthought it there. He was so worried about a catch. The move gets caught anyway. Oh no, and it all goes wrong for Pokesquark. Oh, that's really unfortunate. I'm excited to see if he can bounce back in game two, though. I'm excited to see if he can bounce back, man. Yeah, the uh, mind games. That's what I love about, like, these show sex tournaments. Like, the mind games are unbelievable. They're oh, it's so fun. Annihilate versus the Shadow Polyrath. Oh, my goodness. The new versus the old counter user. Yeah, uh... A couple are eligible, like Water Pulse, Mantine, and Brick Break Hakama O, because they already had the moves. He baits on charge attack priority. Squark, he's thinking about it. This would be a huge call. He commits the shield. It's really tough to call there because you just get KO'd. Also, Ethan, I think we might have played today. GG's if so. He does successfully get the bait. It'll be charge attack priority shadow ball to icy wind. Deoxys doesn't exist, yeah. Sends in the sable. We see the pivot into the Dinair. Dinair answered with the A slash. That's what he had to do. He had to bait out the A slash and he just baited it out. Oh my goodness. Oh my. Slow King. Playing the ABB to perfection. As Dragonair. Oh, he cannot get the farm down. He's forced to throw. He needed to check for the A slash. He pivots. He baits it out. He does leave with a move loaded on the A slash. In comes the Annihilate. Annihilate survives this. So this is a very easy no shield. The interesting thing will be, this is a regular Gligar, which means it's a lot less threatened by charge attacks from Sableye. Thank you, thank you. 
Whereas if you're the shadow, Sableye is extremely threatening here. Whereas as the non-shadow, you can just always no shield the first move. I am enjoying it, Steven. Yes, thank you. So that's an interesting development here. He needs two more foul plays. Oh, he's baiting. He gets the shield. He gets the shield. Okay, here we go, chat. The bait is successful. He's trying to make it to the dig. Can he get there? Sableye doubles up. This will be charge attack priority. Sableye will win it. And I believe I haven't played against regular Gligar in a while, but I believe a foul play can KO here. This will be close. This has to KO for Pokesquark to stay on the winner's side of the tournament. Slowking has to hope. Can his Gligar survive? Foul play into the Gligar. I see the pause. That means it KO'd. And Pokesquark, despite shielding the bait, gets his equalizer. Oh, man. Nicely done there by Squark. Utilizing that Sableye energy, even though the A slash did get baited out. And going for the triple foul play to take it. Oh, my goodness. Nicely done by Squark. Yo, I, I saw that. That was so funny, man. <laughs> that was so funny. Rank 11, Shadow Gator. Honestly, I haven't looked at Ultra yet. But that should be a beast, man. That's going to be so good. I'm probably going to save switch the Gator. Yeah, right, Platypus? <laughs> Sableye on the lead into the regular Gligar. Both trainers looking to stay alive on the winner side of the bracket. And both fine with staying in. Slowking has to bait out that Polyrath. If he doesn't bait out the Polyrath, he's in a tremendous amount of trouble. Um, Avertanch, I have a, a Google form where you can submit battles in the description of every video. We see the safe switch into the Reggie. He baits out the Poly. That's what he had to do. That's what he had to do. Going for the Zap Cannon. This should just KO. So Squark is forced to go down a shield here. Well, forced to go down both shields. Slowking playing this well. Gets the debuff. For Master Pre Ooh. I'm so excited Master Premier is back, man. He's full sending the Scald. Not taking any chances that the Icy Wind will not KO. Just gonna... Slowking just gonna let this through. Of course, Icy Wind will be able to pressure shields off of the Gligar. Polyrath does win charge attack priority over Gligar, typically. Slowking sends in the Gligar. If you're Squark, you would love to be able to pivot and save this Polyrath. This will burn some time off the clock. Is he going to be able to pivot out? The clock's not yet up. Gligar has the ability to throw a move and does! No shields left for Squark. This is a minus one Aerial Ace but it's onto a Shadow Polyrath. This should get it deep into the red, and it does. Look at a pivot into the Sableye, able to save potential counter fast move pressure for later in the game. Foul play, no shielded by Slowking. That does solid damage. In comes the Dugong. Squark has a lot of energy here. And the important thing here is a Shadow Alolan Sandslash will not get knocked out by a Drill Run if it's still at full health, but if it takes fast move pressure beforehand, then a drill run can potentially threaten a knockout. Going to fire off the foul play. Slowking, committing the shield, needing to protect the dugong. The question is, how much does he decide to overfarm with the dugong? Does he just go for one, or does he go for three? He's going for three in the move, going for the drill run to guarantee the knockout, as this does slightly more damage. Drill Run will pick up the KO. Squark still does have access to the Polyrath. The Polyrath is low, but the counters could be valuable. Sending in the Sand Slash. Sand Slash will not be knocked out here by this Drill Run. This does heavy damage. It should put him, I believe, close to upper red health, if not low yellow. That is going to be low yellow health. Continuing to farm up with the Sand Slash. Sand Slash going for the Drill Run. This will pick up the knockout onto that Dugong. And things are looking good for Squark. Drill Run picks up the KO. All that's left is the Gligar. Oh my! No catch to be had! But I don't think this KOs. I think the Sand Slash should barely survive this Aerial Ace. The Aerial Ace. That's not gonna cut it. Pokey Squark gets his redemption there with the 2-1 to series. Well played. You can see the smiles from Squark there. The smiles from Squark, very happy about that as he's able to fight back from a tough game one and get the series victory.
I love the Shadow Gallade buff, Theo. I think it's amazing. Yo, what's up, Wom? And we have, yes, the Calm Day, Darkest Lariat, and Blast Burn chat for Incineroar. Cracked Electric Cup team, 43 and 7. Nice. Sand Attack, Shadow, Lolan, Dug Trio. Possibly at some point. I don't think it's in the plans for this week, but just because I have a lot of stuff to try and get to, but it could be fun to feature it down the road. I think Callum just featured it today. Scafo versus San Judigo. San Judigo with the Annihilate, Chargebug, Mantine, Lickitung, Whizcash, and Shadow, Lolan, Sand Slash, and Scafo with the Wigglytuff. With I did lead the Magnezone, yes. And the important thing is, with that team, if you lead into a Gligar, stay in and Wild Charge. Because you get to a Wild Charge in 14 turns, sorry, in, in 12 turns, they get to their dig in 14. So if you lead into a Gligar with the Magnezone, you can just stay in Wild Charge and dip. If they don't shield, they lose like two thirds of their Shadow Gligar right off the bat. Because people are like, oh, that's resisted. I don't have to respect it. But that's the fun thing, is Shadow Wild Charge hits everything in the meta hard. Also, Scafo, it says on his team, double Reggie Steel. <laughs> um, Snowman and Chun have been on stage, yes. I imagine that's a graphical error, because you can't register two Reggie Steels. <laughs> you can't register two Reggie Steels, chat. Oh man, what a lead for Scafo. Vigoroth into the Lickitung, the safe switch into the Mantine. This is a Ice Beam and an Aerial Ace Mantine. <laughs> Double Reggie Steel. The Aerial Ace is going to connect. No baits here from Scafo going straight for the Rock Slide. Yeah, uh, it's clearly a graphical error that hopefully they will adjust. Now he sends in the Sableye. Uh, you cannot, Samarth, no. Uh, you can only register one of each Pokemon. Ooh, another Aerial Ace is reached. This does not knock out, but it will get the Sableye extremely low. Scapo gonna let this go. He should be able to survive this and make it to double foul play if he wants to, because I don't know if a return is gonna knock out here. He, oh, he is gonna go for the return. So he is confident that this will be able to deliver a knockout onto the Mantine. Let's see. And it does. Good matchup knowledge there by Scafo. In comes the Lickitung. Can he make it to the foul play? He does. Oh my. What a beautiful over farm. What, what a beautiful over farm. Unbelievable. And he makes that foul play. He is going to wait the clock. As San Judigo not only doesn't have switch, but doesn't have shields either. Like at a shield disadvantage. He just brings in the Wigglytuff. Go for the Scald. Like, you don't have to shield this. I mean, you're a charmer, so you can, because you can debuff in the future, but you do survive it. And no debuff the eye roll there for, for San Judigo. <laughs> oh, no. Going for another Scald. The double shield from Scafo. Tap to tap, tap, tap. Get absolutely wiggly tough, trainer. Going for the Icy Wind. Icy Wind, I believe, plus a charm should pick up the knockout. So if he wants to get more energy off, he's going to have to shield this. And of course, that's a guaranteed debuff. None of this Scald nonsense. That's guaranteed. No shields up for Scafo. The Wigglytuff will be hit with the move, but this is a debuffed Scald. So Wigglytuff going to be able to tank this fairly comfortably. Clock still not yet up, and Wigglytuff gets the farm down. In comes that Lickitung. Lickitung now going to get debuffed with the Icy Wind. And San Judigo. Oh, this is such a tough spot to be in. Oh, they fixed it. The second Ready Steel is gone. It's a Talonflame. Hooray! No double Reggie strat. Yeah, over three on debuffs is rough. That's rough. Yeah, it's uh, Reggie Steel and then the uh, new one, uh, uh, Reggie Fire. Uh, Reggie Flame. Yeah. Uh, Junti in chat says Reggie Flame. Yeah. Uh, uh, Y'all haven't heard about that? 
It is it is in the uh Pokemon Legend ZA game, Reggie Flame. <laughs> It is just ready steel with uh, with the ogre pond hearth flame mask. Oh, we got lock-ins. Sableye into the Whizcash. Running double normal in the back with the <laughs> with the Vigoroth and that Wigglytuff. Hunting for the Lickitung. But the Lickitung is on the bench. Foul play, no shielded. Firing off the Scald. Will be able to make a Scald and a Mud Bomb before Scafo gets his next move. Do we see the debuff? San Diego 0 for 3 on debuffs so far. Oh, gets that debuff. Gets that debuff here. Oh, getting the catch. So catching the debuff foul play. And since there is no Gligar on Scafo's team, this actually functions as a kind of okay safe switch. He will outpace here because he's on his five cycle. So he will go for another foul play. This does not knock out, but it will get this basically just into the red health. So we will actually see shielding a debuffed foul play. And now the switch into the Vigoroth. Vigoroth so far behind on energy, but Vigoroth can survive two X scissors here. Two X scissors not going to be a problem he can shield one if he does want to try and preserve some health x scissor number two fired scafo with a choice to make he does decide to preserve some health as he looks to over farm in this matchup over farming massively going for the body slam body slam should just be enough to knock out here i want to say in this matchup it probably does something like 35 percent I could look that up. Oh, losing charge attack priority. I'm going to look that up here. Figure out charge book body slam 33.3. Okay, you know what? I was within 2%. I was within 2% off the top of my head. So I'll take it. I'll take it. A slash into a wiggly tough. Oh boy. Oh boy. Wiggly tough has a shield. He's going to let this go. It is going to be the ice punch. Ooh, just before he's able to get there. Uh, you can check on uh, PV Pokes website, Gusto. On the battle tab. Oh, the switch into the sable. Can he get the farm down? He does get the farm down. And Wigglytuff. Oh, man. Beautiful plays by Scafo. Beautiful plays by Scafo there. Wow. Wigglytuff versus Sandslash in the endgame looked tough, but he sends in the Sable. San Judigo tries for the farm down. It's a Sable, and he's able to play his way out of it and avoid a game three. And Scafo advances to day number two. Very nicely played by Scafo. Yeah, beautifully done. And we have chat. If you guys remember Liverpool... A DM. I don't think I got a DM, no. I have it set where only people who I'm friends with on Discord I get DMs from. So I don't remember seeing one. But if you guys, sorry, um, if you guys remember Liverpool, first place was Nighttime Clasher, second place was Tomahawk, and now they have them as a casting duo at Utrecht, which is amazing. Which is amazing. I think it's terrific to have like competitors, especially people who battled each other. And also this is an incredible frame to pause on. To have them as commentators is so good. It's so good. All right, another winner's finals, Tigo versus Statistan. Yes, Mini Coke, it, it will have to clear copyright, but it will be back live eventually, yes. We have Statistan versus Tigo. Statistan, Mantine, Annihilate, Whizcash, Shadow, Alolan, Sandslash, Lickitung, Chargebug, Tigo, Annihilate, Whizcash. Oh, an interesting pick here. Whimsicott, Lickitung, Dugong, and the Chargebug. Shadow Tenta. Shadow Tenta is fun. Yeah, it is quite fun. A 
And Stan is on Aerial Ace, Bubble Beam, Night Slash Annihilate, Shadow Claw for the Alolan Sand Slash. And Whimsicott, Grass Knot, Moon Blast, Night Slash Annihilate. Other than that, pretty standard across the board. Yo, what's up, Sagittarius? All right, game number one. Stan versus Tigo. Annihilate into the Whiskash. A pretty neutral matchup, all things considered. Definitely dependent on whether a debuff occurs. So we take a peek in the back. Ooh, back lines. I'd say a slight incremental edge to Stan. Yo, what's up, Ultra? Welcome in, homie. Immediate no shield by Stan. Does get debuffed by Tigo. Going for the Shadow Ball. This does not knock out as it's debuffed. I mean, you can choose to shield it to preserve hit points on the Whiskash, and that's what he is going to do. Now, he can just go for a Mud Bomb here, and Mud Bomb will KO. So he has kept his Whiskash extremely healthy. I really dislike using Shadow Alolan Sand Slash. If you notice, I do not use it often in, in, in my videos. I find it too alignment dependent. Ooh, charge attack priority. Minus one Shadow Ball, I think might KO here. Dude, Annihilate is so good. It's just unbelievable how strong this thing is. And he's just going to let that go. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. It's just, <laughs> I don't have words. It is unbelievable. And he sends in the Lickitung. Yeah. The Skull, do we see the debuff? We do see the debuff and a switch to Annihilate. He is gonna switch out. The uncomfortable thing is a is a discharge is very comfortably survived by the Annihilate still. The Annihilate is gonna be firing off the Shadow Ball. Day two and three antics with Men Shout were fun. Many asses cried, nice. Go for the discharge. This does not knock out. Like Annihilate survives this and should make the Night Slash. Discharge connects. Annihilate. Oh, that's very interesting. He chooses not to throw his energy. He chooses not to throw his energy. So he just wants farm on, on his charge bug. Or potentially farm on his Whiskatch. He goes for charge of farm. Interesting. So he does not go for the mud shot down and try for a potential debuff. The Lick is taking a lot of damage. It has a shield, but, oh. This is going to be very interesting. I believe the Whiskash should just about be dry because it went for a Scald and then a Switch Out. The thing about Whimsicott is it's very frail, and even in its type advantage matchups, it can often find loose cons. I struggle to believe in Whimsicott. Like, on paper, it should be good, but I struggle to see it genuinely being viable. The X Scissor connects. He's trying to build up. Oh, he gets the back-to-back. -back. But here's the thing. A Body Slam does not knock out at this range. Body Slam does not knock out here. Charger survives this. Stan has to try and farm down, and he cannot. It's a simul KO, but Stan's opponent has a Pokemon left alive. So that's a game one win for Tigo. Ooh, it looks like we have game two lock-ins already. They locked in very quickly. Like a tongue into the Whiskash, great lead for Stan. Yeah, like in Go Battle League, I think it's a bit more like he safe switches into Whimsy here, but Whimsy. I can't imagine it's going to perform amazingly here versus this like a tongue. I mean, if you're if you're Tigo, you don't mind this just because this way like a tongue does get chipped, of course. Moonblast is going to kick when Ultra League Regionals. It'd be kind of cool, but they're just in a great league for now. They're just in great league for now. Because this Body Slam probably, if it doesn't knock out, one more lick after will. We do see the shield from Tigo. Ooh, he goes for the Grass Knot now. We see the shield by Stan. Grass Knot, of course, hits harder than Seed Bomb, but the pacing is worse. Gets the t to the Body Slam. Tigo has to shield if he wants to preserve this energy. 
He does. He's double shielding the Whimsicott now. If I'm Stan, do you just let this go and counter down with an Annihilate? Because Annihilate's energy is good everywhere. I guess you could also Volt Switch down. Oh, I like this play, chat. I like this play. I like this play. Oh, man, I like this play. Okay. Sending in the Charger Bug. Charger Bug, before it even makes a discharge, it's going to get smacked with a Shadow Ball. I think if you're Stan, you throw four counters and then catch on your Charger to inflict maximum psychic damage here. Oh, he catches after two, but he caught a bait. He caught a bait. Oh, man. He catches, but Tigo anticipated for that, and he ended up baiting. My goodness. X scissor. Tigo, no shields left. He just has to absorb this damage. Oh, no, Dragoon. I'm sorry. Dude, zone is zone is too wicked. This mud bomb does not KO. A scald would come close. He no shields. <laughs> what a call! What a call! Oh my! What a call, man! What a call! That's just. <laughs> And, I mean, Annihilate is just winning here for Stan. Annihilate is just winning. Any Night Slashes on Charge Attack Priority. GG Trainer. GG Trainer. I think regardless, Stan just wanted a shield for Annihilate. And, yeah, it's over. I would enjoy if Scald was brought back down to 30% because I don't like I don't like coin flips deciding regionals. Nice, Matthew. That's a beastly day, man. Anytime you can go through a day of battles and the amount of wins you have st starts with two, like 20 wins and up on a day, that's insane, dude. Good stuff. Oh, I mentioned it a bit earlier, uh, Sagittarius. It was Shadow Magnazone plus Dragon Core. I ran Shadow Magnazone, Shadow Gligar, and then Hakamo'o. If you want to be um, slightly stronger into Gligar, you can run like the 122 plus Attack Gudra in place of the Hakamo'o. Or you could also run Shadow Dragonite as the third, but I think that team is just too glassy, so I don't like Shadow Dragonite in that role. But yeah, Shadow Magnazone is too good in this meta, dude. It is too good. It is absolutely beast mode game number three licky into charger good lead for licky charger can only really compete in the twos here charger can only really uh compete in the twos here glassy is fun but i like my shields for a magnezone or gligar bro i don't i don't want to have to worry about shielding my dragon type i like bulky dragons bulky dragons Ooh, that's an interesting anti-meta idea keystone I like the outside of the box thinking there. He can double X Scissor, but two X Scissors don't knock out here. Like, Licky isn't even in the yellow yet. Oh, we see the pivot into the Annihilate. Going for the Power Whip. He does get the counter through. Yeah, Theo. Unfortunately, I have a super high rank Coma O for the, for the Great League. It's rank 16, but I had to build the. Uh... Oh, okay. Yeah, this, should, uh, this is Stan's game to lose. He's going to bait here with an Ice Slash. Yeah, King. Like, the fact that, that, that Gudra wins charge attack priority over so much stuff and it's still really bulky is crazy to me. Like, uh, uh, were you able to get the uh, 122 attack tech or are you running a uh, high rank Gudra? I'd be curious to hear from people who are ran high rank because the only one I could get was, was the Licky tech Gudra. So that's uh, what I ran. Jump Bluff beat Empoleon. I imagine Empoleon wins that one. Play Arctivax. Ooh, Arctivax is cool. I like Arctivax as well. Ooh, charge attack priority. Stan's charge wins it. At charge attack priority. All right, I'll stop. <laughs> I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> 
121.7, gotcha, okay. He's just gonna let this go and just trust in the sweeper, annihilate, and he knows it's over, yeah. I mean, he can get debuffs off, but he gets the Shadow Ball one turn before. Oh, actually, way, way before. For some reason, I looked away and thought he was just about to get it, but no, it's four turns before. Yeah, I uh there will be coverage of of both days today. Yes. I try and use the official term charge tech priority cuz I am an official caster, but I will often just say CMP cuz it's very wordy to say charge tech priority because on the official broadcast I have to say charge tech priority, so I try and get in practice of saying the uh, the official term. Yeah, for that team, you uh, do want a dragon that's neutral to fighters, yes. Sir Cory versus Sandodu. All right, chat, I'm going to get some water. I'll be back in a second. I'll be back in a second. So momentary chair stream because I need to get some water. I'll be back in a second. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, uh, mistakes were made. I actually pulled the headphones out of my laptop, but we're back. Okay, we'll be back in a second. I got my cup. We're back. Hi. Uh, yes, Ball Strangler. Also, that's an insane name to have. <laughs> I'm just saying, for uh, for uh, streamers to respond to your questions, it is it is rough out here, trainer. It's rough out here. All right, they have exchanged team sheets. So, Sir Cory versus Sandodu, Talonflame. Wizcash, Lickitung, Annihilate, Azumarill, a regular Obama Snow, Sandodu with Reggie, Wizcash, Mantine, Licky, Annihilate, and Shadow Dragon. Yo, Brian with the 15 months. I appreciate this more, homie. Welcome in. Hope you're doing well. All right. We're back, chat. If it's regular, it'll be on Icy Wind. There's no reason to run regular unless you're running Icy Wind. Lickitung into Annihilate. Okay. Licky has to land a whip to win this matchup. <laughs> Seth. Oh, the Talon save switch. Answered by Mantine. The thing is, this Mantine, is it actually running Water Pulse? We'll have to see. We'll have to see. It is running Water Pulse. Okay. He's full sending the Water Pulse here. Does this KO. Sir Cory calls it. Does it knock out? The Water Pulse does pick up the knockout. The extra damage coming in clutch for Sandodu. The new Mantine tech paying dividends. In comes the Lickitung. Going for the Water Pulse now. Let's see this damage on to Lickitung. Let's see this damage on the Lickitung here. The Water Pulse. Yo, that actually adds up. Yo, Mantine can do damage now. Are we sure we're okay with this? I like that. Understanding he's not getting the Water Pulse. Get the damage you can. Get the damage you can with the Aerial Ace. Gets the farm down. Leaving with a ton of energy. It's a zoom roll in the back and it's Lickitung. He could potentially send in his own Lickitung if, if he wants to feel more comfortable absorbing damage. But, I mean, Annihilate also tanks this Power Whip, so he's just going to let this through. And then this is just winning for Sandodu. In comes the Lickitung! No!
Going for the player up here. We see the shield from Sendodu, but... I mean, he's shielding just to keep Licky healthy, but there is no longer a win con for Corey in this game. Going for the power whip, because it doesn't really matter which you shield. He does get the shield call correct with shield and the power whip, but a whip is going to land regardless. You don't have the ability to stall the clock long enough to save yourself from that, because this, this play rough, like the seven to eight seconds from throwing the charge attack is not going to be enough stall by any means. Like there's still going to be like 15 seconds left on the timer. So Sendodu can farm up quite a bit. Ooh, over farming a lot here. Ooh, perfection in mechanics by Sendodu. We will see the shield by Sir Cory. Lickitung continues to farm. Throwing in the middle so he can't make a catch. They look a lighter blue than usual. Huh. Yeah, it uh, might be the phones they are using. He banks the energy, sends in the Licky, sends in the Annihilate. He didn't make it. He shields, but I mean, Annihilate wins charge stack priority, so. All that energy. Just to not get to use it. Oh no, trainer. Yep, Sandodu takes it. Sandodu takes it. Yeah, the, yeah, the uh, 1477 Mantine is kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. Why does Henry like all the mons that I don't have? Oh, tough lead for Sendodu as he looks to advance to day two, leading into the Azumarill. He could farm up 10 and try and catch here. Oh, tries for it. The save switch into the Mantine, answered by the Lickitung. He's going for the Water Pulse. Is Water Pulse actually better damage for energy now? I genuinely don't know in this matchup. Wait, hold on. Let me go back for a second here. Oh, uh, the Mantine was always 1500. The Mantine was always 1500. So it's just a graphical error on, on, on their part. Yeah, the Mantine was, was always 1500. Yeah. Let me take a look here. Mantine Licky. Aerial Ace versus Water Pulse. Water Pulse is more efficient, chap. 0.96 to 0.9. It is pretty close. It's pretty close. So it is barely more efficient to go for Water Pulse. Good to know. Yeah, Water Pulse kind of helping Mantine in this matchup. Hold up, Chad. Hold up. I think he may have wanted to double Aerial Ace here instead of Water Pulsing. Because I think he could have made double Aerial Ace. He could have made double Aerial Ace because he'll be able to live two more. Yo, oh, he could have made double Aerial Ace and forced a shield. It's a 55 energy. It's 55. This is only a slam. Mantine's most efficient move. Yo, that's pretty cool. And he just goes straight for the ice beam right away, forcing the shield. I would imagine so, Kurt, yeah. Because Mantine was, was always a pretty fraudulent water type. And now it's a much less fraudulent water type, which is always nice. If he shields this, he just gets swept by Talon, so he's going to let it go. But I still think, yeah. He, I think he, I mean, if he just lets this go, Talon is such a problem. Up a shield? Yeah. Yeah, it's a 80 base. So it's 55-80. 
Yo, what up, Tevin? 5580. And you always flame charge first? Chat, if you're playing Talonflame in these neutral matchups, so you can flame charge first and then your next two flies are still two. If you double flame charge, then your, your, your next fly is three. So it's three, two, three. But if you flame charge into double fly, then it's three, two, two. So important Talonflame tech. Flame charge first and then double fly. Triple fly? No, sir. Never. In a neutral situation, you never want to triple fly. Because you can boost up your attack first. Sir Cory gets the equalizer versus Sandodu. Ooh, good lead for Sandodu. The safe switch into the Lickitung. The, the fourth fly, I believe, is back to three. But more often than not, considering only two shields are eligible in a match, guaranteeing 3-2-2 two, two pacing is good enough. Like, with, yeah, with fly, 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 I think it's 3-2-2-2. Two, two, two. But flame charge, fly, 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 is 3-2-2-3. Three, two, two, three. But most of the time, you're pretty okay. Oh! He brings Whizcash into a Lickitung. He doesn't bring in his own Licky. He is hard predicting that it's the Azu in the back and he's saving Licky for it. But yeah, so for those who do run Talon, that is that is the uh the the extremely devious tech. Yeah. Because most of the time, it is, I mean, it's a game where people only have two shields, right? So, a lot of the time, being able to get three charge attacks and boosting the first and then having two boosted ones after just puts you in a really favorable position. Yeah, and also the flame charge boosts up the incinerate damage as well. But yeah, I saw, I can't remember what regional it was, but there was someone who did triple fly versus Lickitung, and it hurt my soul to a great extent. The Scald, that's going to do a lot. Ooh, aggressive pivot Mantine. Mantine answered with the Azumarill. Very nicely timed by Sandodu. Gave up switch. I would still definitely prefer to be Sandodu in this moment. He saved the Whizcash to potentially debuff later on. Yeah, in a in a ultra, because things are bulkier, there can potentially be that argument in certain situations, but specifically for great, like for these tournaments, I think Flame Church Fly Fly neutrally is just always the the superior play pattern. I agree. Because stuff is just that much bulkier in Ultra. Oh, the bubble farm down. Not happening. But yeah, I tend to be a little Great League focused because that's obviously what the uh, tournaments are being held in. But yeah. I am a really big uh, Skeledurge enjoyer. I agree. People have pivoted in these tournaments more to Talonflame because Talonflame doesn't take super effective from the... Uh, Talonflame doesn't take super effective from the charge moves of Annihilate, and Annihilate is everywhere. So people have pivoted a bit more to Talon because Talon is better. Oh, gets the boost! Oh, gets the catch out of the Whiskash! And it's back, Dragoon. It's finally back. Oh, the boost by Sir Cory. Is it going to be enough to propel him into these finals? Into day two? I think the answer is no! He full sends here. Does he call it? He shields. Wait, by not baiting. I think Sakori has this. I think Sakori has this. He has to slam and hope it KOs. I think the Az... Oh, this will be really close. I think the Azu can barely hang on here. It does hang on. The Lick KO'd! The Lick KO'd! Oh, no! The Lick KO'd! 
And also, it uh, freezes like that. That is not lag. Uh, that's just how the uh, tournament situation plays. Like, in the tournaments, if, if a final mon, like, if a move KOs, it pauses for a second. Like, here, when the game doesn't pause right here, we know that it doesn't KO. But it puts it into one lick range, so that's why it pauses here. That's why it pauses here. They uh, do that in the tournament, so it's a bit more more dramatic. But yeah, that is the game working as intended. The one turn lick should go first. And they hug it out, yeah. Ooh, chat! Look at this! WTM Go! Arctabax, Sableye, Shadow Gligar, Mantine, Lantern, and Vigoroth. And an adequance, Wigglytuff, Vigoroth, Giratina Origin chat. For the first time eligible in a tournament, Giratina Origin has made the field. And he's in a winner's finals on day one. Cresselia with Future Sight. Standard move sets outside of that across the board. I'm excited to see how Giratina can do, man. Giratina Wigglytuff core is devious, bro. That's a devious core. And we have Vigoroth, Mantine, Sableye, Avalanche, Arctabax, not on Icy Wind, Water Gun Lantern, and the standard Gligar. And Mantine, no Water Pulse going for Ice Beam. They've locked in game number one, leading the Shadow Gligar into the Cresselia. Okay, a very neutral matchup across the board. He benched the Giratina. He did not bring it. And WTM Go did bring the Vigoroth to try and shut down that Giratina. Going for the Future Sight on charge attack priority to the dig. No shield by inadequate. Shadow Dig does a lot of damage. I appreciate that, Vince. Yeah. I, I do try and cover as many of these as I can. Occasionally, I do get to cast them as well. So I don't get to cover them, obviously, on the channel if I'm casting them. But I try and put out a, a community post if I'm actually out there casting. Oh, they both over farmed by one. Oh, no. Go for the Shadow Dig. A uh, Great League Tina is, is quite nice. Like, if you do have the ability to get one, it is worth trying to do a, like, low friendship trade if you have locals. It is, it is quite good. It's quite good. Like, obviously, it gets destroyed by, by Lickitung. But, yeah, the, the VOD will have to go through copyright. But after it clears copyright, it'll be back up. Ooh, the Vigoroth letting the Future Sight go. That's going to do massive, massive damage. It's 15 of oh, no. This would be an interesting endgame. This Vigoroth's energy is really, really scary for Inadequance. He's down a shield, and that's not where Charmers want to be. He's massively down energy to this Vigoroth as well. This is, this is looking like a game one that might potentially be spiraling out of control for Inadequance. Oh, throws on alignment. He does have the back-to-back -back here, but throwing on alignment is a bit interesting. Like, he will be able to get both off. Oh, he saves it for later. Sends in the lantern. Doesn't Adequins just choose to stay in here and try and go for a debuff? He does go for the debuff. That's awesome, Dragoon. Oh, he shields the icy wind. He shields the icy wind. These charms adding up a lot. Going for the Surf. And Adequins letting it go. He's going to try and sweep with his Vigoroth. This Lantern is debuffed. You have to keep in mind the WTM still has the ability to fire off a Body Slam on his own Vigoroth. The sheet said Water Gun. So my guess is that was a graphical error. And it's probably just Spark. Because I, I don't think the competitors would use the wrong move. So... Yeah, it uh, must have been an uh, error on the graphic that they pulled up, and it's not actually Water Gun. This is still not slam range for WTM. 
I think WTM might have to catch onto the Vigoroth, like a CMP sack maybe. He lets it go, but I mean, a slam doesn't KO here. Yeah, this, this, this doesn't knock out. This doesn't knock out. He should survive this. It'll be really close, but I think this should barely survive. <laughs> I have not watched that chat. I have not watched that. I've just played a lot of Vigoroth mirrors. I've just played a lot of Vigoroth mirrors. Oh my goodness. This, this I have not seen. This I have not seen. Oh my. Hey, the fist bump there. Game number two, and out of Quince versus WTM Go. Cresselia on the lead into the Vigoroth. Let's take a peek in the back. Ooh, double normal in the back. And WTM brought the Sableye. Oh, no, bro. If that Sable gets on Wiggles, it's doomed. It's so doomed, dude. It is so doomed if that thing gets on Wiggles, bro. Oh, no. Not like this. Not like this. Charge attack priority. I mean, Shadow Dick doesn't KO, so he's going to let this through. If he ends up wanting to switch into his own Vigoroth after landing the Future Sight, he will put it into Body Slam range. Plus counters. Yep. Oh, staying in. Okay. So just going to force energy from WTM Go. WTM not thinking the Aerial Ace will KO. Looks like an Adequence does have a very bulky crest. So. Maybe just going to let that go. He sends in the Vigoroth. He doesn't want to reveal. And I do like not wanting to reveal. The oh, he plays to a CFP tie that he does not win. Oh, no. He's forced to burn a shield now. He's now down two shields. Does he not just save two shields for the Charmer now? Yeah, he does. <laughs> he saves two shields for the Charmer. Oh, no. Oh, not like this. <laughs> At least they're laughing about it. They're laughing about it. Oh, no. At least they're laughing about it. <laughs> he knows it's over. There's nothing he can do. There's nothing he can do. He knows he's cooked. He knows he's completely cooked. He knows he's completely cooked. Yeah. And Adequitz's game is lagging so much right now. Look at Adequitz's game lagging. Look at how, oh, look at how much this game is lagging, bro. <laughs> Thank goodness that he was in such an unlosable position because his phone just stopped connecting to the internet right there. You can see the eye roll there. He's like, bro, you got to be kidding me right now. You got to be kidding me right now. Nah, bro. Luckily, yeah, WTM was like, it's over. I'm not going to try and win this game. Yo, it's Mr. Tho. It's Lundberger and it's Nighttime Clasher. All right, Pablo Dinas. Hey, chat. If y'all remember, uh, Maxi was in here earlier to say hi. He's in winner's finals, chat. He's in winner's finals of day number one. So Maxi was in here earlier to say hi. He might still be lurking or he might be in bed because it's very late in the Netherlands right now. But he's in winner's finals of day number one. Ooh, locked in. Pablo versus Maxi. Cresselia into Wizcash. Amazing lead for Maxi here. The pivot into the Lickitung. He doesn't have an amazing punish to a Licky safe switch. He's going to stay in and go for the Moonblast. Well, I'm not spoiling Davey. Uh, this is Winner's Finals, and this is Maxi. 
I am not spoiling, trainer. It is what's on our screen currently. I, uh, held off until I saw it, and then I was like, yo. Oh, wait. Someone said there was a Moonblast debuff? Hold on. I, I was reading chat. I was reading chat. Oh, the Moonblast debuff. Oh, no. Oh, that's brutal. I love the eye roll there by Pablo, bro. That's so funny. That's actually so funny. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's actually so funny. You're good. You're good. But, yeah. Going for the flame charge first. Maxi knows ball when it comes to the Talon Flame matchups. The flame charge. He does make that slam though. Honestly, I don't mind the shield because it's an awkward farm down for the waste cash. And this isn't of one volt switch range. Ooh, that charger bug is looking scary. He sends in the charger bug. And Maxi's like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, this is this is bad. Cause he's not on water gun, he's on spark. This is such a core breaker. He's gonna need so much work out of this charge bug to win this game, because it's still crest onto cash in the back. Charger's gonna need to backpack the team right now. Just <laughs> Charger bug got to carry whisk cash to victory in this one. Is he try for the catch? Oh, great patience by Maxi. Not letting the catch happen. Do the energy advantage able to outpace here? Well, if you want to talk about cooking spaghetti in my chat, Gambino, I will not time you out. <laughs> No debuff for Pablo either. RNG hates Pablo in this game, bro. RNG hates it. All right, the Scald connects. No debuff again. <laughs> oh, no. Pablo is just like, at this point, uh, <laughs> I don't know what ancient Mayan deity I pissed off, but I am sorry. I've made a serious and continued lapse of my judgment. I would like my Skull debuffs back, please. Yo, Skull has not been debuffing in this tournament, bro. It has not been debuffing in this tournament, but I mean, x Scissor doesn't KO here, so I'm actually just lets us through, yeah. Oh yes, Gambino. I am I am familiar with uh with that. I have thrown spaghetti at 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 the side of my cupboard to see if it to see if it sticks. And always salt the water. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, uh RNG just said no, sir. In game number one. Alright, Maxi takes the win. Yo, what's up, Koval? Yeah, I'm doing great. We are watching day one of Utrecht right now. Ooh, okay. Whisk cash into an Iolape. Uh, not really, Gobs, no. Alternatively, it's a lot more fun to throw the spaghetti at the wall, and then if it sticks, <laughs> and then if it, if it, like, <laughs> It is also just fun to throw spaghetti at walls, so would recommend. Does he get a Skull debuff? I bet he does. I'm calling it. Oh, he does it! <laughs> he doesn't get the Skull debuff. He gets the catch of the discharge onto the Lickitung. A timer? I mean, timers make sense. Noted. We'll yeet spaghetti in the future. Yo, it's up, Storm King. This sets up Crescent to Licky Endgame. It's uncomfortable for Maxi being down a shield. 
This slam does not put it into lickdown range. Like the charge is still very, very healthy here. Yo, what's up, Abro? Welcome, man, homie. X Scissor doesn't quite two shot here. It'll be close. Like one more volt switch. I think Licky barely hangs on here. Oh, again, I would like to reiterate that I have not seen this. Ah, oh, he doesn't get it. I have not seen these battles. Day one, I am unknowledgeable about. I am not a knower of ball about day number one. Ooh, the charge attack priority there. Maxi down a shield. He still has a pretty healthy whiz cash. Sends in the whiz cash. It's gonna take whiz cash a while to get to a move. Goes to the night slash. It, he could call this. It, oh, shields, okay. I was gonna say if he calls it, that could get really awkward. But another night slash. A no shield. I like that no shield by Pablo. It is day one, Koval, yes. Interesting that he mud bombs. Interesting that he mud bombs. He didn't go first called. Fishing for a debuff. Sends in the licky. I think. I mean, you can do decent damage to the licky, but you want to preserve the ability to get at least one counter on that cash later in the game. Okay, he switches here. He gave up debuffing? Yeah, he is like, oh, it turns out uh, debuffing is actually broken. I do not have the technology to debuff anymore. He goes grass knot, thinking that double grass knot, well, triple grass knot will be the play here because obviously he doesn't have future sight and a moon blast is not gonna knock out. So he's opting for triple grass knot. That does open up the door for a potential Pablo catch. That could be a win con. Pablo just Licky doing what Licky does best. Body slam, body slam, body slam, body slam. Non-stop body slams. Another slam. This crest is getting low, chat. This crest is getting low. Clock's up for Pablo. Can he get the catch? At the back to back. Oh, he gets it. He gets it. Oh, man. Oh, what a catch by Pablo Dinas. And that secures the win right there. Because the Annihilate should be too low. The Annihilate should be too low here. It'll be close. And he makes the slam. Oh, my. Beautiful catch by Pablo there. In comes the crest. And Licky takes it. The sigh of relief there from Pablo as he gets the equalizer. Beautifully done. Liverpool top four. Turin 2023 top eight. Maxi Barcelona top four. Last year Utrecht top eight. And last year Liverpool top eight. All right, Lickitung on the lead into the Annihilate for this game number three. Lickitung has to land a Power Whip to be able to win this matchup. Where does he have safe switch into his own Annihilate? He's down energy though. He's down energy though. Oh my goodness. Straight for the Shadow Ball. That shielded if Pablo baits, this could get really uncomfortable really quickly. He's farming up. He's baiting. This is such a tough call to make. Does he decide to commit a shield or does he decide to call it? He calls the bait. Maxi, what a play. Oh my. Calling the bait. Exactly what he needed to do. He's now going to start shielding. Oh, what a play. Going for the Night Slash. That gets no shielded. Now going for the Shadow Ball. And this is going to do a lot of damage. Pablo has a choice to make. Does he commit? He does not. Oh, that's going to be good by Annihilate. In comes the Lickitung. 
But this sets up Lantern into cash in the end game. Oh boy. If he mirrors here, he brings in the Lantern. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What a read by Maxi. He brings in the Lantern, expecting it to be the Whizcash in the back. There it is. Can Pablo finally get debuffs? That's what it comes down to. Can he finally get debuffs? Yeah, that's a crazy team. There's still no debuffs for Pablo. Oh no, Pablo. I'm so sorry. He can't get a debuff to save his life. Shields the power whip. Oh my goodness. Absolutely brutal for Pablo, dude. Oh my, this is terrible. Can he finally get a debuff? The Scald. There it is. There it is. <laughs> it's a 50% chance. And he keeps not getting it. He keeps not getting it. Maxi commits the shield. Goes for the whip. Double super effective damage, but it is debuffed. This will still be a close end game here. It picks up the knockout. Licky versus Licky. Maxi throws a slam, but this is a debuffed slam. This is a debuffed slam. He switches into the lantern. He can't make the double surf. Oh no. Disaster strikes. Pablo able to make the power whip. It KOs. And Pablo is going to advance to day number two. Oh my goodness. Oh, he had it in his head. Slam into double surf. But Pablo just able to outpace. Maxi will have another opportunity in the loser's finals of his bracket to advance to day number two, but Pablo gets a guaranteed spot in top cut. All right, Vampirist versus Donne. Vampirist, Shadow Gligar, Umbreon, Registeel, Cresselia, Shadow Sableye, and Dugong. And Donne, Shadow Wizcash. Shadow, Alolan Sandsash, Pelipper, a very interesting pick, Chargebug, Lickitung, and the Annihilate. Yeah, if he switches right away, he can probably have this. Uh, it is eight winners finals, Mini Coke. So this is a massive tournament. So they have, so Top Cut is a top 16. So there are eight winners finals. Shundo Blitzel? Oh no! I just did not play that that day, bro. I don't know if I was supposed to play that day, but I did not play that day. That like research day. Idone right, versus Vampirist. Umbreon into the Shadow is cash. All right, who's gonna get debuffs, chat? Take a peek in the back. Backline is very good into Cresselia. Psychic? Oh. Uh, okay. Psychic gets the debuff. Psychic is a pretty poor move and it's non-stab. Maybe there's some secret tech why it has to be psychic, but the psychic is a surprise to me. In comes the dugong. Gonna chip with a mud bomb. I guess maybe for annihilate, but most annihilate for a night slash, so you just win that anyway. I would be interested to hear the reasoning behind the psychic. Lickitung getting debuffed with the Icy Wind. Go for the Power Whip now. Dugong should barely survive this because it's at minus one. It's not going to be enough to knock out. Now going for the harder hitting Drill Run. 
Donna, can't just let this go. I believe that's that's with Ice Punch. With Night Slash, I don't believe it beats Umbreon. Yo, what's up, Emerson? Umbreon is a very nice wall to lick a tongue. Because, of course, Lick, not going to do a whole lot of damage. Umbreon is very bulky and has the type resistance. I got zero shinies this event because I did not play it. <laughs> Uh-oh. Not like this. Not like this. A third shield? All right. I'm just going to fast forward to the rematch, bro. I'm just going to fast forward to the rematch. Come on, bro. I don't know what that left phone is doing, but switch it out, please. Switch it out, bro. Switch out that left phone. We are fast forwarding to the rematch. Switch out the left phone, bro. I'm talking about Night Slash Shadow Ball as, as the moveset. Yeah, with a Night Slash Shadow Ball, I believe Umbreon wins that. Ah, I guess PP Poke says that it loses it, but in practice, I've seen it win it. Unfortunately, the uh, the the new moves that are added are not eligible for this tournament, so it's only Mons that already had the moves that got buffed that are eligible. Bulu is going to be fun. Bulu is going to be fun. Yeah, so unfortunately, no Gallades here because the uh, moves are not eligible. But yeah, because the new moves were added like right around the time when teams like team lock-in was for, for this event. Oh, they're just okay. Going to send in the charge a bug. Yeah, in Vancouver in two weeks, stuff like Gallade for Alligator and Hack... Eh, Gallade and for Alligator will be eligible. Hackamo is eligible in, in this one. Yo, what's up, Demariante? Going for the harder-hitting drill run here. Ooh, gets another one. I think? Unless Donne throws... This plus an ice shard can KO. Yeah, so he's forced to throw. In Sinor Kamda, it'll improve it. It'll still not be like meta, but it'll definitely be better. Crest versus A slash is dependent on the fast move. If it's Powder Snow, it's super playable for Crest. If it's Shadow Claw, Crest gets clapped. Also, yeah. Ooh, Powder Snow. Okay, somewhat playable. Oh, but this is a Moon Blaster. You actually win the zeros as Crest if it's the Shadow, Powder Snow, Alolan Sand Slash, and you have Future Sight. Hakamo is also a beast. I, I will be... Uh, oh, gets the catch. Shadow Glade will make it to regionals. Yes. It'll be difficult to use, but it's very strong. In comes the whiz cash double skull that's so much energy you have on a shadow cash bro shadow cash is just it sucks to play against if it has an energy lead oh, gets the debuff that's another skull he yeah he is just conceding he knows it's over he knows it's over Gudra and Ultra? I honestly haven't looked in Ultra. I was just looking in Great. Shadow Gallade means... Oh, because it just outpaces it? Jeez. That Pokemon is too cracked, man. That Pokemon is too cracked. I don't know, man. Say hi, hi. Hello, welcome in. Hi. 
I just love Future Sight, man. Future Sight allows Crest to do genuinely stupid things. I am a big Future Sight stan until I see a Guzzlord, and then I get sad. But Guzzlord is like fourth on the dragon tier list. Like, I would put Shadow Dragonair, Gudra, and Hakamo all above Guzzlord. Um, if it's Shadow for the Great League, I would build Gallade. Gardevoir doesn't really have any play in the Great League. But Shadow Gallade has a lot of play. Charge bug into the Shadow. Oh, it's the Shiny Shadow Sableye. Yo, that's hype. Shiny Shadow Sableye actually has a pacing disadvantage here. Shadow Latios, I like Shadow Latios, but the fact that uh, For Alligator is a Shadow Claw user is pretty monka. Is pretty monka. A lot of Cress is comes down to if you can get a very high, a very high rank Cress, especially a high defense Cress, it does things that it has no business doing. Like the meta shifts are unkind to the homie Shadow Latios. I love Shadow Latios. It's a Giga Chad, but the meta shifts are a bit rough for it. Gudra, nice. I've been really, really liking Gudra. Sends in the Umbreon. That was well timed on a on an awkwardly timed swap. Very well timed by by Donna there. He has to throw back to back though, or switch, or switch. Uh, fire types aren't Andy, but the main reason people run Future Sight is because it helps versus Lickitung. It helps versus the Shadow Powder Snow Alolan Sand Slash. So it just gives you a strong move to hit those. And on top of that, in these tournaments with Talonflame Rising, because people want a fire that is more consistent into energy advantage Annihilate, then it gives you something to hit the Talonflame with as well. It, yeah, it is something I was, I ran an 8, 9, 10 for years, but at Sinotour LA, I was able to meet up with a homie Acoin, and he traded me a crest that went to a 2, 10, 13. So I have a new crest, and I am really enjoying the, the new crest. Ooh, Reggie and Zeros. Ooh, boy. He can land the drill run. The thing is, he has energy on the Charger, and Charger still has some HP on it. If he can just force him to throw, and he will be able to force him to throw. Yeah. Like, I still think Dirge is quite strong. But... Ah! Ooh! That plus a lock-on. But A-slash just gets a farm-up for days. Yeah, Toxapex just out out bulks Gallade significantly. And now it's just Shadow A slash in the zeros. Sable wants the foul play. Hold on! Gets the foul play! Gets the foul play! Oh! Ho, ho, ho. Man! Did what he could in that one. Tried to sweep with the A-slash, but it was not to be Vampirist. Yeah, I was thinking in my head, but yeah, it's it's Shadow into Shadow. I'm not used to seeing Shadow Sableye play. Because I don't have a good one. Shadow Sable into Shadow is cash. Let's take a peek in the back. Ooh. He baited with a Mud Bomb. I actually love that bait. I love that bait so much. He calls it. Oh, that does so much damage. Good grief, bro. Shadow Sableye is crazy. I wish I had a good one. Beanie, I don't think they've announced yet. Gets the catch.
He'll still need two X scissors to knock out here. Well timed by Vampirist. But yeah. Stewing Emp, I imagine it will be good in Ultra, yes. Specifically Ultra Premier. Ooh, throw on an alignment there. Not ideal from Donne. We have we've Yeah. Don't have to worry about that whatsoever. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Shmeedy? Shundo is Sui Electrode? Yo, that's cool. That's cool. That thing will be really fun in Ultra Premier, Tim. Because we've been waiting for, like, some, some of these cooler XL builds that get stat product checked and open. Like, we have been waiting for Ultra Premier, and the fact that it's finally back is just... I'm so excited. I'm so excited. A Gira Origin is allowed, yes. And we have seen it played. And Adequence already made day two with it. We haven't seen all of the winner's finals yet, so there could still be more. But yeah, Ultra and Master Premier come back this season, which is goaded. But yeah, Gira O is allowed. I have so much nonsense built for, for both the Premier Cups. Oh, he wanted that catch. He didn't get the catch, and now he just gets double drill run. Yeah, Adriano, I was incredibly honored to get the call to get to do that, and it's really cool to see others getting that opportunity as well. Yo, what's up, Max? Uh, you uh, battled on stage and were so, so close to doubling up on surfs. So we have seen your winner's finals. We have not seen loser's finals yet. Master Premier since August of 2023. Oh my goodness. Regular, regular Shadow. Shadow should, should be preferred. Yes, yeah, so Otina is legal because it's possible to get a Great League one. It's not possible to get a Great League Tina altered because only Origin was in research. Ooh, Dinoski has a Guzzlord. Hey, it happens, man. It happens. Redemption time and losers, I believe. Dinoski, Mantine, the Annihilate, Cresselia, Reggie, Guzzlord, and the Shadow Gligar, and Saphil with Charja, Azu, Annihilate, Licky, Talon, and Cash. 1507. Oh, no, Nish. That's pain. I'm hoping that the next time you're able to trade for it, it'll work out a little bit better. Oh, what a great lead for Dinoski here. We see the save switch into the Talon Flame. Staying in with the Gligar. Could have thrown the Aerial Ace as soon as he got it, and it would have been perfect timing. Here, it's slightly suboptimal timing. Sends this in, because he, he will make the Aerial Ace before the second fly, so this is still pretty decent. Hey, that's awesome, Adriano. Happy to hear that. interesting he could have thrown there but instead he wants to get his mantine lower to deny farm for the charger bug i kind of like that play i kind of like that play because he he could have thrown to deny that but he chose not to he chose not to can't quite get to an aerial ace but I mean, he still has Gly and it's Crescent Azu in the back. Unless drastic things occur. If I'm Safil here, it's not terrible to just X Scissor and swap. Oh, he's staying in. I don't know how comfortable I feel with this. I would definitely wait for a better one, Andy, because it's definitely possible that you can get a better one through Lucky Trades. Who gets the catch? It's definitely possible to get a better one th through Lucky Trades. I would hold out for a 15 attack Dialga, personally. Like, I believe 15, 14, 14 is minimums, I want to say. Uh, if Gobs is still in chat, he would know for sure. For the uh, new Origin Dialga. 
For for Alter Dialga, 15, 14, 12 is the minimum. But for Origin, it's a bit more specific with its stats. But I would not build something that isn't 15 attack on a Dialga. Because guaranteeing to lose charge attack part, uh, 15, 14, 14 is the, the minimum. Sound good, sounds good. But yeah, it'll, it'll take a bit, but making sure to build one that hits the stats you want to hit is definitely worth it in my view. It's definitely worth it in my view. Yeah, so Gob says, Origin Dialga minimum is 15, 14, 14, and you can do 13 HP if you best body it. Okay, that's good to know. Ooh, taking advantage of the timers. I like it. Yo, that's awesome, Green Flat. That's awesome, man. Uh, Dialga is so bad in Ultra because it just doesn't have the stats. Yeah, Ada just doesn't have the bulk to compete in Ultra, whereas all, all the way at level 50, it, it has the bulk it needs. Uh, both are good. Just make sure that you build them that exceed the minimum stats that you need, but both are incredibly strong. Yo, this uh, bubble down... About to go crazy. He does make the dig. It all comes down to does he have a move on the crest? Yo, it's a blackout. And does he leave with a move? I think he's one short of a move here. Oh, charge attack priority. He wasn't. He had the move. Oh, my goodness. Dinoski. Safil gave him a run for his money, but Dinoski takes it. Yo, it's a Patreon though. <laughs> he just wants to see the video and now Safil's on the screen. Yeah, uh, Steel Dragon is such a cracked typing in the Master League. All right. Oh, great lead for Dinoski as he's looking to return to day two. The save switch into Talonflame answered with the Mantine. And he's just going straight for the Bubble Beam. His shitty crest with CMP because it's awful. Oh, that's too funny. Mine would never. Oh, that's so funny. That is so funny. Oh, speaking of crest, Max, I finally got a better one. I used to run an 8, 9, 10. I got one. Unfortunately, it, it doesn't make the lantern bulk point, but I got a 2, 10, 13 wall at Sino Tour. So I was thinking, you know what? It's better than what I have. So I have built a second crest. I will probably keep trading to try for a higher defense crest. But I'm pretty happy with the 2, 10, 13 as the crest that I have right now. Oh, he's at the back-to-back. -back. A fly shouldn't knock out here. Three. Oh, look at that big boy defense stat. Let's go. <laughs> look at that defense stat right there. Oh, that's clutch. That's clutch. Yo, what's up, Jack Sign Up? That's clutch. It is like the, uh, oh, charge up. Met with the Gly. Oh, this is rough. He is really trying to dance, but it's midnight. It's midnight. I am still looking for that max defense Shadow Dean air, but I've never found one. I have a crazy Ultra League Feeny that I'm excited it will eventually get Nature's Madness on because it's, uh, it's just so bad right now. But Nature's Madness should hopefully be better because it helps its pacing issue slightly. Uh, Defense Dinair gets a bulk point versus Lickitung that allows you to beat Lickitung. It's like how there is wicked Gudra tech to get a bulk point to get a attack break point. With Shadow Dinair, there's wicked tech to get an, a... a uh, Dragon Breath bulk point. Sorry, a lick bulk point. I'm tired, so I'm muddling my words. Attack, uh, defense and attack way to Whizcash. Get some nasty stuff. Nice. Yeah, there's a Rapidash at my house. I'm gonna catch it. Lele, uh, it will at the end of the month, yes. And he has to go for Aerial Ace because Bubble Beam is a hilariously bad move and would not KO.
Fight out through, uh, you can enter your IVs through PV poke, and then it'll show you like different bulk points and break points and stuff like that. Annihilate, uh, it's very good in great and very good in ultra. Uh, Nature's Madness should be better than Moonblast, yes. It has a guaranteed debuff. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Dobbs? The uh, bulk point for Cret. The uh, Spark bulk point, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I know that my 21013 doesn't get it. Alright, Dinoski back to day two. Absolutely zero surprise there. All right. Oh, I have gone too far. I went too far, chat. Nature's Madness costs 50 energy. So it, it, it it's cheaper than Moonblast, and it's a guaranteed debuff, which is just... It should just be better. Pokeballer with a Trevenant. Hello? Triple Ghost. Bro, he's so weak to Lickitung. He's so weak to Lickitung. Yeah, it's, I think, I want to say it's 50 energy, and let me pull up the exact stats on this thing. It, it won't get it till April at the earliest. Nature's Madness. Yeah, it, it it's 80-50, so it's 1.6 DPE, and there's a guaranteed debuff. A guaranteed uh, defense drop. EUIC will be for alligator plus for alligator counters, yes. Ooh, great lead for normal hide. The save switch into the Sableye. Answered with the charge a bug. And that's a gold bat that I see on my screen. Hello? Uh, chat. You also see the shadow gold bat, right? <laughs> you also see the when in any of these tournaments have we seen a shadow gold bat, bro? That's kind of cool. Um, I don't have it memorized off the top of my head, Chase, unfortunately. I know it exists, and I know that my crest doesn't have it. Is this Evo Cup? For Alligator, Meta, and Ultra, it should be, yes. Like, there are some matchups that it might lose, but it's going to perform dramatically more consistently. Because Sims will oftentimes, in the one shield, assume and... Yo, what's up, Shilling? He says, I hate those bulk and breakpoints, especially for ML. Got a 98 shiny Palkyo, and I choose Diamond. It is 14 defense, has a bulk point less. Although, last heat train, got a 98 shiny, got 14 def... Oh, no, yeah. Like, if I'm missing an HP or two, I'm very okay with that. But a missing defense always hurts. Missing defense always hurts. Oh yeah, uh, the Reggie just doesn't have a combat power somehow. And there's the gold bat! It is Ice Punch though. It is Ice Punch. It is Ice Punch. I think Shadow Ball actually does more here. And just going straight for the Fang. I believe Shadow Ball does slightly more. I mean, a Shadow Ball won't knock out probably, so probably needs two anyway. Uh, thank you, King, for looking that up. Appreciate that. But yeah, like the the Sims with Feeny in the ones always look better than they are in practically because they assume a successful surf bait into landing a Moonblast, whereas it's much less bait dependent when you, when the difference of energy between your bait and your nuke is less. My Zygarde, I'm at 111 cells and then I stopped. <laughs> I haven't run routes in a couple weeks, I'll be honest. I have not run routes in a while. I have gotten real lazy with it. I got to within the final 100 cells, said, bro, I'm literally just going to use this for one time in Ultra and then never again. And then I stopped it. <laughs> yeah, Shadow Bat is a, is a really cool pick. It's a really cool pick. I am hoping he does very well. Uh, you can get up to three per day, yes. And... 
Yo, Doms, uh, GG's, by the way, the other day, uh, when I, I think it came down to me having to anticipate a combo play. And I tried to anticipate the combo play because you had a move banked. And I was like, if you snipe me, I lose. So I tried to anticipate it and you didn't go for it. So I lost, but GG's, man, GG's. Covers a route, you nice, that's awesome. Oh, Reggie Steele into the bat, tough lead for normal hind. I already have a very nice Masters roster. I don't, like, I could build Zygarde, but realistically, I don't think I would play it a whole lot. The nice thing is Solga, you do have the ability to lucky trade for. Zygarde, even a 10-10-10, drops basically nothing except the mirror. Banks 100 energy on Reggie. If he can get shields, if Pokeballer can get shields down, that energy is extremely problematic for normal Hein. Skelly versus Oo though. Take my cells, get another 130 lying around, still farming those XLs. Yeah, I have I have four XLs. I level, I like, from when rare XLs started until now, I saved all my rare XLs and I was able to level 50 a Solgaleo, which has been incredibly fun to use. But I have like no rare XLs now, so <laughs> I will I will never be close. I'll never be close. Sounds good, Blackout. I'll probably still be here because we still have like three more hours of stuff to get through. In comes the Wrath. I wouldn't be surprised to see a double foul play just to ensure damage. He returns. I actually disagree with this because you can guarantee two foul plays. So even if one shields, you get a little bit of extra damage. I disagree with the return there. Like he's nodding his head because that's really good for him. But he could have like a foul play is a non insignificant amount of damage onto a Shadow Polyrath. But yeah, my Zygarde is super trash. But even a 10 10 10 Zygarde still cooks. The only thing you drop is basically the mirror. It's super f forgiving in IVs. Sends in the Reggie. He just lets it go. And he's just going to go for so much farm on Wrath, bro. So much farm on Wrath. Very fair, Jer. Very fair. We uh, did see an Arctobax in a winner's finals earlier. But yeah, Arctobax is still a very good Pokemon, but the meta is a bit more hostile to it currently. Yeah, he just doubles up on Ices and wins. He, wait, he is debuffed, but I think the Ices plus the counter can do it. Let's see. Yep. So well played by Normal Hind. Yeah, Doms has, has the uh, Hundo Zygarde. So if uh, anyone just wants to type boo this man at doms, I will allow it for 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm totally not jealous or anything. I always get trash IV mythicals. Uh, Furfru is not eligible for this tournament, no. <laughs> only for 30 seconds, only for 30 seconds. Doms is a wonderful person. Only for 30 seconds. And then we're going to go back to being nice to Doms. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, San Judigo versus Tauntaun Batus. <laughs> Doms is booing himself. Nah, Dom's, Dom's run some incredibly cool stuff on... Yo, what's up, Neon? Yes, I am streaming. Yeah, Dom's run some very cool Master League tech, including Solar Beam Ho-Oh, Solar Beam Groudon. Dom's has been featured quite a few times. It's Tauntaun Patus again, running Guzzlord, Shadow Charizard. He's bringing it back. Cresselia, Shadow Whiskash, Annihilate, and Lickitung. Bringing back Shadow Zard is pretty cool. Shundo Pika Libre. Oh my goodness. I have been, I can't remember what season they added the shiny, but I've been legend every season since season three and, and, and I've never gotten the shiny. So honestly, any shiny, if I get one of these seasons, I'd be ecstatic. Mantine into Licky. Okay. We'll have to check Licky. Sorry, the Mantine moveset here. Okay. It is not Bubble Beam because if you Bubble Beam, it makes the, the licks go from, I want to say it's two damage to one or three to two. I can't remember off the top of my head. 
But either way, you are reduced the like damage by one, which can allow Mantine to win it if you Bubble Beam right away. But Sanju Digo doesn't have Bubble Beam, so that doesn't really come into play. Um, I, I genuinely don't know, Storm King. I genuinely don't know. But yeah, Shundo Pika Libre would be an insane flex. Save switch charge a bug. Ooh, Tauntaun's backline is not a big fan of charge a bug energy. Shadow Hundo versus Luna. Nice, Tomas. I actually got the Shadow Hundo Teddy Ursa as well. I don't have enough XLs because I spent the XLs on a regular one before I got the Shadow Hundo, but I'm working on best buddying my, my, my Shadow Hundo. Water Pulse is actually a pretty decent move now. Yes. So we have seen some Water Pulse Mantines in this tournament. If you're Tauntaun, I think you just never shield this. Yeah. You just never shield this. If you think you're getting farmed down before you make a move, you can switch in the Guzzlord and snipe. But if you think you can make a move... Oh, he throws! He throws the energy. That's really good for Tauntaun. That's really good for Tauntaun. Because he could just Guzzlord. Goodbye. But is, is, is it Powder Snow? If it's Powder Snow, Crest is really strong in the back. If it's Shadow Claw, then Guzzlord is really strong in the back. It is Powder Snow, so Cress is really good here. Cress, it doesn't have Future Sight, but Powder Snow A Slash is kind of bad into Cresselia. Like, you straight up lose to zeros if it is Future Sight. I don't know the exact matchups for Moon Blast, but it can do pretty well. It can do pretty well. Pulse Mint, yep. Yeah. Pulse Mantine, it, that's what I haven't tried yet, but I'm excited to. It seems like it can put in a lot of work. But yeah, so I'm hoping there's an event where Teddy Ursa spawns at some point. So that way I can get a second round of Teddy Ursa XLs. Because I grinded for it to max a regular 1 to 50 just to get the Shadow Hundo during the last event. So. Araquanid is interesting. I haven't looked at it, but I feel like it would be in an awkward spot where it would just feel expensive to have Water Pulse as your cheapest move. I could be wrong though, but. Oh, he can't get the farm down. He's forced to catch. That's awesome, Donnie. That's awesome. Uh, Drill Run does more. Ice Punch is more efficient. Shadow 15, 15, 13. Nice. Emolga XLs. I found an XXL Emolga, and I was thrilled. That's a beautiful no shield by Tauntaun. He just has to try and make it. Oh, he can't get there. Actually? No, 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 no. Ice, Ice Beam does more. Ice Beam does more. I was going to say that's a beautiful no show, but then I was like, wait, Ice Beam probably does more, bro. Hold on. Let me look. There is no way Ice Beam doesn't do more. What am I cooking? What am I cooking? There's no way Ice Beam doesn't do more to a Guzzlord. Ice Beam... 58.8%, Shadow A Slash, 56 point, oh, if he shielded the Ice Beam, he might have won, he might have won, yeah, I heard Audino is, is nesting this season, I have been to zero nests, because I've been at home being a little content gremlin, putting out two to three videos per day, I am a professional content gremlin chat. Mid over a mills. Holy. <laughs> nah, that's insane. That's insane. Oh, Licky into Licky, my favorite. Body slams. Fucking body slams. I love the Lickitung mirror. Yes, I do. Wow, the Lickitung mirror is over. Charge attack priority. Dauntaun wins it. Okay. Yeah, uh, Audino is like 2100 dust, I think. Uh, Dialga does not need any help. Please, please do not have us buffing that Pokemon. Yeah, uh, Licky wants to be like 8 to 9 attack. 0, 15, 15 won't make it to 1,500. 
It's 3150 with a star piece. Oh my goodness. Faggy's opponent a couple weeks ago. He's definitely a great battler. That's awesome. Yeah, please, please do not advocate for, for Dialga buffs. Um, I found it out just because um people posted on my Discord that that they saw an Audino nest. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So that's how I know, purely just off word of mouth. I have done zero checking of local nests. In terms of leaving my house, I have not left my house. <laughs> oh, you're right, Shilling. Yeah, the uh, Palkia adventure effect may may be very, very worth it. Because it's what, like, 5k for five for like 10 minutes or something? And you would just make that back in no time. Yeah, it, it it's 5k for 10 minutes. You, you, you can make that back in no time. On the GoFest raids? Oh, that's so far out, I genuinely don't know. But I get a lot of Stardust. Well, apparently Audino is nesting, so if you can find an Audino nest by you, then you can cook. I will apparently have to go check. I will apparently have to go check um, local nests. Which probably won't be for a while. In comes the charger, but yeah, I just... Yo, does he call this? This would be a wicked call. Oh, shielded at the last second. Shielded at the last second. Oh my goodness. That's a close one. That's a close one. Hold on. I'm checking my local Discord to see if they have uh, reported any nests. <gasps> a nest is reported as Audino chat! Where is that? Where is that? A nest is reported as Audino, bro. Oh no! Uh, it is not a great nest. It's not a great nest, but I have an Audino nest. I have an Audino nest. It is uh, actually a pretty poor nest, but there's an Audino nest. Someone has reported it. A hundo Gallade for Masters. In Master Premiere, it can do well. In Open Masters, it will not do well. So San Judigo able to take it. Uh, nests are typically parks. Uh, I just have a local Discord that posts them. Like, if people find a nest, then they can just be like, yo, I was at this park and it's this nest. But yeah, I guess I have a place to be tomorrow now. I At noon tomorrow, I have to do my taxes. So to celebrate me getting done with my taxes, I'm going to go grind an Audino nest. All right. Annihilate. Whizcash, the little cotton ball whimsicott, Lickitung, Dugong, Chargebug, and EJB with Mantine, Dugong, Shadowcash, Licky, Charger, and Gligar. They're locked in. Yo, what's up, J Hood? Game number one Annihilate versus the Shadow Whizcash. If Shadowcash lands a Scald, it gets so awkward as the Annihilate. I actually just have, have one job, Andy. So as of October of last year, so as of October of 2022, I am a full-time content creator. So I do not have a second job anymore, which is nerve wracking, but definitely exciting. So I do, uh, I do content and stuff like this full-time now. Oh, he gets the boost. EJ shaking his head. Like you gotta be kidding me, bro. He gets the boost, the Night Slash. Oh, he lives. He lives. Oh, that's big. That's big. He lives, but Tigo getting the boost is rough. Oh, that's rough, bro. That's rough. Sends in the Gligar. This boost, the Night Slash is gonna hurt. He can no shield it, but it's gonna do like half his HP, dude. It's gonna do like half his HP. Boosted Annihilate is crazy. It's crazy. In comes the dugong. He's he's gonna dig and switch.
and it's Licky. He doesn't debuff before switching. Interesting. Cash double incinerate? Uh, that sounds like something that Gligar could cook. Gligar hack backline? Easy cook inverse that team. Uh, Ruffian, that's actually who reported it to me. Was I have a buddy, Schmidi, who lives in New York. I got to meet him in uh, GoFest NYC. And apparently all of Central Park is an Audino nest. So... New York homies who are watching, you now have plans after you get off work tomorrow. <laughs> um, it'll be better, Lucille. It still won't be top meta in my view in the Great League. Because a billion water types just got buffed. He clicked on a discharge there, which is confusing because they do the same damage. So he's just going to get knocked out by the body slam. In comes the dugong. He kind of has to catch here. Ah, EJ thought he would over farm. Um, PV poke is a good approximation, but realistically, I kind of use it to try and cover each other's weaknesses. But outside of that, I'm not too worried if it rates a team poorly. Like the team that I went 20 and five with today, it probably doesn't rate amazingly well, but it cooks. Oh, tough lead for EJ as he tries to stay alive in this tournament. Whiskash into Dugong. The Shadow Whiskash plays this way better than, than the regular, though. Like, Mud Bomb, you're going to see, because he's going to throw on 7 here. Mud Bomb actually hurts. Like, Mud Bomb comes close to, to 3-tapping Dugong, whereas a non-Shadow Mud Bomb does nothing. Like, that Mud Bomb does a solid chunk of damage. And now he does get debuffed. He has the ability to switch out of here and save this energy if he wants to. You can stay in with the cash and just play it out and just do a bunch of damage and play zeros. But I wouldn't be... Okay, so he is going to stay in and fire off the debuffed energy. I mean, Origin Palkia was already good. It, it'll it just help make the Lando matchup even cleaner. So it's a... He has to throw on alignment if he wants to outpace here. Yeah, he doesn't. So he gets the Mud Bomb. If you're feeling real aggressive, I was going to say, if you think he's going to throw in good time, you try and snipe with a Volt Switch, but he's not going to do that. EJ just going to play out the zeros, but look at the zeros right there. That's a bad matchup for, for, for Shadow Cash. It's a CDBB on, on PV Poke, but yeah, we, we're uh, all about the vibes. We're all about the vibes. Charge uh, sends in Annihilate. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. My biggest advice to people, because a lot of people will oftentimes stress about, like, getting the perfect... a call. A lot of people will stress about getting the, like, perfect IVs, building the perfect team. A lot of the time, if you just have a team that can cover each other's weaknesses decently well and you can make a game plan for what you're going to do versus bad leads, you're going to be in a pretty good spot a lot of the time. He gets that full farm down and this is just over. He gets the equalizer. Oh my goodness, nuclear. Well, it's 1 in 20, so after getting 5 and 6, you're probably at, at about odds. Annihilate, Shadow, Glagar, Gudra. If you see a Charmer, that'll be difficult. But outside of that, I think that team could work. It's also a bit soft to Azumarill, just as a whole. Yeah, Mantine definitely rose up at, as, like, the... Like, instead of coring Whizcash with Skarmory, people are coring it with Mantine. Ah, uh, yes, RS7. He's discharging. This does the same damage as an X Scissor. It's just more expensive. <laughs> and you can see the look from EJ there. He's like, what? Why? But yeah. Uh, 
Annihilate into Charger Bug. Not a bad matchup for the Annihilate, but Annihilate can win once. I believe straight Shadow Ball as well. Dude, Annihilate is such a cracked Pokemon. Yeah, Sh Sh Shiny Mantine is very cool. It's very cool. Oh, my stutter's coming out. Rip chat. Oh, uh, that's how you know I'm tired. My stutter's coming out. We gotta run for the hills. Um, I would reconsider the team to make it less weak to electric. If you want an honest answer, Sander. Because you just lose to a lantern lead. There's, there, there's no way to play out of that. Like... You can run teams that are AVA weak, but you want at least one of the two things that you're that you're weak to to have at least some play into it. The single hardest counter to ape, uh, if it's on the Night Slash version, Mandibuzz does very well into it. So does Umbreon. Uh, Wigglytuff is very good into it. Gligar is very strong into it if it's on the Ice Punch variant, or honestly, like if it's on the Ice Punch variant and it's even energy, or if it's on the Night Slash variant. Whizcash just looking to chip away here with these Mud Bombs. If he tries to throw in good timing, EJ gets another one. Oh man, Whizcash's pacing is just elite. Ah, it's so, it's so good. It's just unbelievable. Just absolute, just mwah, chef's kiss moment with the Shadow Whiskash pacing. Yo, that's awesome, Phil. Yo, uh, that, that's hype, man. That's hype. Uh, Mendini, we have a Giratina Origin in day two. I think the Golbat made day two as well. Yeah, uh, if you have Aben Gudra, Max has a very good point there of you're going to want something that can beat Charm because you're very weak to Charm. In comes the Lickitung. And Licky up a shield is very good here. So EJ should have this and, and make day two. There's still two more hours of day one. Oh my goodness, we are... We are getting through it, Chet. If you happen to remember offhand, Max, how many total competitors were there at, at uh, Utrecht? Because I believe it was the largest special event ever. What's been really cool to see with these tournaments is the growth in terms of the amount of players doing them. Just, it keeps going up, which is amazing to see. I'll ask. Okay, thank you, thank you. But the the like we keep hearing more and more. This is the biggest tournament we've seen. This is the biggest tournament we've seen. The European International Championship, 206 registered. Let's go. I heard EUIC already filled a full 320 slots, which is crazy. Unbelievable. And to think getting to 128 used to be an accomplishment. Loads of no-shows, got you. That makes sense. It is a free-to-enter event, so I guess that, that that does make sense that people have no-shows. Sir Corey versus Freaka. Freaka with a Trevenant. It still didn't, Jerry. Yeah, it still didn't. It's been in the files for a while. All right, lick a tongue. Intel oh, come on. Be extremely serious right now. Oh, we had a switch out. Hold on. We switched out of the Licky Mirror. Oh, he wanted that body slam catch. He didn't get it. I'm a bit surprised Freaka is staying in here to Power Whip instead of immediately going Mantine. I guess, I mean, Sir Corey's trying to bait out the Mantine to free up the cash, but... You had to go through a waiting list. Essentially... Reserving tickets, got you. Okay. One hour of that is Licky Mirrors. <laughs> the accuracy. Yo, why does Abe get Mantine that low? Can we talk about this? Can we talk about this? We're going to start a dialogue. The Ape is cracked. He throws, but a slam doesn't KO here. Freaka will survive this and get his moves off. Oh, I play this game too much. I play this game too much. 
I don't think this is a matchup that I saw. I just I I just played too much. <laughs> oh my goodness. In comes the Vigoroth. This is gonna be cash into Licky Endgame. Looking good for Frika. And just charge stack priority on the skull. Yep. Freaking knows what he's doing. Sir Cory lets it go. But yeah, chat. I have a very special surprise for y'all when we make it to the end of day one. I think y'all are going to be very excited. I think y'all are going to enjoy it. And you can basically just slam here. That looked like a slight timing inaccuracy, but realistically, it shouldn't cost him. Like, clocks are pretty desynced, but... Does this the, does the surprise involve Lickitung? No. Not a special guest, no. Ooh, taking advantage of the timers! Sir Cory might, like... It'll be... He he is doing what he can to, like, desync timers and switch out. He is really doing what he can. He's really doing what he can. Licky barely hangs on. In comes Vigo. But Vigo just farms this down and should just be winning. Yeah, that's... That... that that's game. That's game. Yeah, I don't really see a need to ever really run Swampert when cash is as good as it is. The surprise that you're going to enter Vancouver? Uh, sadly, no. Sadly, no. Yeah, and he just doesn't have to hit any bubbles. All right, game one win to Frika. We get the nice look at the teams. Very standard. And Icy Wind Obama, as, as we thought, since it's the regular Obama. YouTube, please. And Claude on Poison Sting and Sludge Bomb. Interesting. Oh, Claude into Talon. This is where having... What? It said Sludge Bomb and he's on... Bro, uh, graphics department... Uh, in slightly a tough spot here. In slightly a tough spot here. Uh, graphics department has had more more errors than than they usually do. So apparently it's Stone Edge, not Sludge Bomb. Uh, graphics team were incorrect. So with Stone Edge, this is tough for Corey. Yeah, Frigga just always knows Shields the first. I don't like going for Fly first. I think that's just a mistake. Because why are you not boosting yourself? Sends in Licky... I mean, you can just farm up a bunch, chip it, and then bring in your own Licky. Yo, what's up, JD Monty? Um, Icy Wind on non-shadow allows you to beat Lickitung in all even shields straight Icy Wind. So that's why... Oh, gets the catch. Nice. So that's why people run... If they run the regular, then they run Icy Wind because it allows your, your, like, core breaker of dragons and waters to also beat Lickitung. Scrafty's gone because it gets crushed by Annihilate. There's... It's very tough to run a... It's very tough to run a Pokemon that just gets completely dominated by the best fighter in the meta. And Annihilate doesn't have to shield anything and fully farms it down. In early ranks, I had someone save switch a Scrafty. I shielded nothing. I fully counted them all the way down, and they just conceded. <laughs> and I hope that they use that as an opportunity to be like, okay, uh, the meta is very unkind to Scrafty, so I will pick alternative options. Going for the whip here. Whip barely does not knock out. He's able to save it, send in the Talonflame. 
And there's there's the flame charge. There's the flame charge. They see zero bubbling. Okay, he hit a he hit a couple bubbles. He hit a couple bubbles. Does not KO. That allows him to get a slam though. I mean, realistically, if you're getting hit with a stone edge, taking a slam doesn't matter a whole lot. In comes Mantine. Annihilate Glassy, but it just... Yeah. And that's the thing is, when metas rise and fall, some Pokemon will rise and fall as well. That's a very nice overfarm by Frika. Alright, Azumarill versus the Mantine. Freaka just gonna need to spam out these Aerial Aces as much as he possibly can. The Aerial Ace is gonna connect. Brave Bird Talon, not seen super frequently. Um, it was... Zizwilus who ran a Fly Brave Bird Talon, but... I believe the Brave Bird tech was because if you land a Brave Bird in the two shield versus Whizcash, you, you can incinerate down. So it makes Whizcash forced to give up a shield, if I'm not mistaken. Sending in the Claude. No catch to be had here. He's going to shield just try and bubble down, which you should be able to do. If he went Stone Edge, could he actually have... Oh, he gets there! Oh, I thought that bubble would KO, but he gets to the Stone Edge. Oh my goodness. Throw on the Ice Beam. There's still the shield available for Frika. And you can't hold two Ice Beams, so he's still short here. And he outpaces by one turn. He outpaced by one turn. Got you, Minico. Got you. In comes the Licky and Freak at a day two. All right, WTM Go versus Richie Beckett. WTM Go, Arctabax, Sableye, Shadow Gligar, Mantine, Lantern, and Vigoroth, and... Is that a Glissapod? Skarmory, Lantern, Guzzlord, Shadow, Gligar, Whizcash, and Glissapod, bro. Ooh. I feel the spice, chat. I feel the spice. Is a uh, is a uh, getting the, the uh, temperature is being raised by this Glissapod spice. On the other side, unfortunately, Glissapod looks absolutely dog into this team. Mantine, Lantern, and Gligar, that Galissapod, I don't think we'll see it. And it is the Avalanche Arctabax. Game number one, Skarmory on the lead, into the Lantern! Oh, that is not what Richie was hoping to see. The save switch into the Guzzlord, answer with the Vigoroth, and it's Mantine for the Whizcash in the back. Oh no, dude. Oh no. You cannot get more hard counter than that. So there's a specific attack weight on Gudra. It's like 122 plus attack that allows you to do four damage per dragon breath instead of three versus Lickitung. And it allows Gudra to beat Licky in the ones if it lands a power whip and in the twos straight Aqua Tail. Fast forward button. Um, if Switch is not one in the mid game, I will fast forward it. Yes. <laughs> if, if WTM go somehow forgets to shield. Okay. Yeah. He shields and he can just counter down here. Oh, he's taking no chances. Uh, yeah. Uh, Switch advantage is not one. So it's, uh, Scarberry into Lantern and Whiskash into Mantine. All right. We're just going to say, oh, wow. The Mantine got completely, like, <laughs> we fast forward. The Mantine's still full health. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
What a skillful game. That definitely was not over from the moment the teams were locked in. Terrific. All right, game two. Let's hope it's less RPS. Wizcash into Vigoroth. Brings, ooh, that could be interesting. Yeah, does CMP on six here for the Vigoroth? I'm surprised he didn't throw right there. I view that as just a strict misplay by WTM. You should always CMP there because why would you risk getting debuffed? And he gets debuffed. I don't know why you would risk that. He has land and he pivots out. He saves all the energy. I guess if you're going to do that, then you just can't throw the energy. So he banks a ton of energy. That energy can be useful later. And he pivots into the Arctabax. Arctabax would be so good in the back, but it's actually brought in here. So Richie actually is playing to this thing. Yeah, I like banking the energy. That's the, he's more or less forced into that play by the fact that he didn't throw on charge attack priority. You see the shield now. He sends it in. Lan Ooh, I actually like this play because normally Lantern and Arctabax is horrible, but you can just spark it down. Dragon Claw is not going to do a lot realistically, and you'll get a nice healthy energy advantage. It's not enough of an energy advantage to offset the just amount of health that you've taken though. Like this Thunderbolt about evens up the health more or less, but you're just so far behind that WTM, I don't love this bait. Like if it, sh if it could shield it more power to him, but yeah, I don't, I, I don't love that bait. I don't love that bait at all. I don't love that bait at all. I guess he's going for just a one shield farm down play. Like, he leaves with a lot of energy here. He's just looking to pivot. Oh, gets the catch. Catches the mud bomb that was saved. Nicely done. Nicely done. In comes Gligar into the loaded slam. Yeah, he is saving energy everywhere. His play style is very different from how I play things, but it's working. Three slams should be enough to knock out here. Richie is going to use a shield now. Goes for yet another slam. This will be getting the Gligar low yellow, very close to red. Oh, it actually does get him into the red. I stand corrected. He's forced to throw. And he gets the surf off. Yeah, he uh, wasn't able to quite get that farm down. In comes the cash, and he does it. All right, he takes it. He takes it. Any Gira or Gallade so far on this tourney? Yes, there is a Giratina. A uh, Gallade and for Alligator aren't allowed in this one, but. There is a Giratina. So WTM takes it. Unorthodox play style, but hey, it works for him, so props. Yo, Max, it's you, trainer. He's in chat, and he's on the screen. Annihilate with Night Slash, Lantern, Cresselia, Lickitung, Talonflame, and Dugong. First, oh, versus Stone. This is going to be a heavyweight bout. I can't wait. Shadow Dinair, Shadow Sableye, Whiskash, Azu, Licky, and Skarmory. Uh, uh, this is going to be a good matchup. This is going to be a good matchup right here. I'm excited. Licky into Licky. This is not a good matchup at all. Boo. <laughs> no. I'm sorry, Max. You're getting fast forwarded, trainer. I refuse. I refuse. Hold on. Oh, he lost charge attack priority. Ooh, that's actually unfortunate. He's going to have to concede a shield in, in this lead. 
That is a bit unfortunate there. Because Stone managed... To, I mean, Stone would have gotten a shield out of this lead anyway because he wins charge stack priority. But... So, realistically, it, it, it plays out the same way that it would have. The player with Lickitung won the match. Great question. It is a day one losers final. So, the winner of this best of three qualifies for day two. He sends in the Azu, but winning switches everything here. Because he has Lantern that, that he can put on this. So, a losing charge attack priority, having to go down a shield works out. Because switch does nothing for stone. He sends in Sable. Sable just going to be met with the Dugong. And if you're Dugong, it feels pretty safe to just respect the potential power gem and then just go for an Icy Wind. He does full send the power gem. Max is thinking about it. And he does shield. Yep. He does shield. In Ultra, Scrafty kind of gets bullied by Verizian being everywhere. And Tenta. So, it had immense play in the past, but the meta has gotten a lot more hostile to it. Bro, even a debuff power gem is probably going to do so much damage. I wish I had a Shadow Sableye, man. This thing is wicked. This thing is so cool. Like, power gem. <laughs> There's so much damage. What the heck? Yeah, and you just keep debuffing it more and more and more. Pivots, because any energy the Sableye throws here is debuffed. So that's very okay to take that energy. He goes for, for, for the foul play, but... Out of curiosity, Max, for Shadow Sable, do you recommend, like, high rank? Or I know a lot of people really like the attack weight Shadow Sableye. I'd be curious to hear your, your thoughts on that. Well, a lot of water types got, got buffed this time around. Like, for alligator is going to be everywhere. And so having something like Veriz will be very good. Master Premier, me too, JR, me too. I cannot wait, man. I cannot wait. Yo, Max with the, with the Game 1 win versus Stone Collection. Another Lickitung lead into a Dugong. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The thing is... It, his Licky is really good into what Stone has in the back. Yo, what's up, Iron Corker? Welcome in, Trainer. You do have pace here, barely. Winning CMP and maintaining as much defense as possible in almost all of my mods. Okay, got you. That makes sense. All right, I'm printing the headlines now. Max Prasad, noted hater of health. <laughs> HP, eh. <laughs> Professional hater of the HP stat. I still think Haxorus will have play, but I imagine there will probably be stronger options just due to the fact that it'll feel a little inconsistent without the guaranteed debuffs. Any new meta to, to the regional? Uh, because the regional started so close to, to the uh, new season beginning, Mons with new moves were not allowed. Like, for Alligator and stuff, was not allowed. We have seen a Water Pulse Mantine. We have seen the Giratina Origin. And... There's something that I know that's coming up later that I don't want to spoil. But I know there's something coming up later that is new. Which I was actually awake in time to see. <laughs> I was actually awake in time to uh, see something cool. Ooh... Slam on charge attack priority. This doesn't knock out, but it will do quite a lot of damage. It's really close to a power whip, so it'll come down to how well was stone counted. Like, he's like two or three off here. And that thing is, is probably the Mon that I am quite excited about competitively. Yo, doesn't get the slam. Oh no. Jeez, yeah, stone, stone, like, this Sable energy is such a problem. Stone should have this game won now. Stone should have this game won now. I don't think there's a way Max wins this. Even if you fully sacks the Lantern, I don't think Dugong wins this. Because the, the Dugong has already taken damage. He, he gets a catch on a Dugong, but yeah. This, this just feels over. Cash, Cash is winning for, for stone in the back. Cash is winning for, for Stone in the back. 
Yeah, Max, a, a certain individual who happens to uh, dress like a uh, Team Rocket leader everywhere he goes. An individual who I, I clearly need need to meet and, and get style tips from because they are far too stylish when they battle. The slam, and then here he is just like, please let it be Skarmory. Please let it be Skarmory. And he has to commit the shield. Uh, if it's below 1500, probably yes. Missing no. Yeah. I don't think Stone wanted to reveal third here. But they're laughing about it. They're laughing about it. And then he thunderbolts. Being like, please let it be the Skarmory. But I mean, I, I mean, it wouldn't KO anyway. But yeah. He I guess the thunderbolt, the whiskash, and have some fun with it. So... <laughs> hey they they bring eu casters over to na so hopefully one day they'll bring na casters over to eu so i'll get to meet all the eu homies oh game three lick a tongue into shadow dragon air oh he uh, told you it was cash oh that's funny <laughs> Is it me, or does it look like Stone's Dragonair does not have the bulk point? It looks like its health is going down pretty fast there. Either that or I'm just tired. But to me, it looks like the Dragonair is not taking the lick super well. I could just be coping, but it doesn't doesn't look like it's taking these, these licks amazingly well. Ooh, gets the catch of... Oh, he thought he was catching on something else, so he actually went for the Aqua Tail. I know he's Dean Aravis, and I can tell you he doesn't... Okay, got you. Skarmory. And this sets up Annihilate into Lickitung in the back, which is pretty good for the Annihilate. Like, as the Dugong, you can soft lose zeros here and just go for farm on Ape, and I don't see that losing for, for Maxi at this point. Yo, what's up, Jace? Or JC, welcome in. It's probably JC. <laughs> I am bad at pronunciation. I am bad at pronunciation. All right, goes for the sky attack. Icy Wind doesn't KO. Stone can over farm quite a bit here. Go for a double debuffed sky attack to pick up the KO, but I think Maxi is just not going to shield and just go for farm on the... Farm on the ape. Ape farm is just too good. It's just too good. Pronounce your name correctly the first time you're, you're one of the few did. Let's go. Ooh, protecting the dugong. Interesting. So one in the and he's looking to reset the debuff. Oh, switches Licky into Licky. Go for the slam. Interesting. Do I know Spanish? Uh, very poorly. Uh, this is the end of day one, Jessica. The end of day one. All right, body slam. Need to de- Okay. That makes sense, Max. That makes sense. Need to debuff in case it's Sable in the back. Covering for all, all eventualities. Nice, Arch. That's awesome. In comes the ape. Oh, and that's why you pivoted Licky. Because he, he would never be able to farm down. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. He's thinking about it. He's like, do I shield? And he gets the shield call right. He pivots Dean Air, but he has no energy. He's at the back-to-back -back Night Slashes. This game is done. And Max is going to move to game number... Well, not... Actually, I was going to say game number three, but this is game number three. We're, we're moving to day number two. Let's go, Max. Bro, I am... I am clearly not... Not, uh... It has been a bit since I did one of these regional streams. I am. I am fading a little bit. I'm fading a little bit, chat. All right. Max to day two. Big pogs. Congratulations, Max. I haven't heard about that, Jer. Uh, a superior this season. It'll be interesting to see how, how the meta shakes out. Oh, there it is, chat. Hakamo! I knew it was coming. Hakamo sighting chat. 
I do think running anti-waters is good. I've been preferring electric types personally. Brick Break Hakamo -o from the rocket leader himself, Lurgan Rocket. Yeah, Brick Break Hack. Or Hawk. There it is. I, I am expecting to see a lot more of this. I'm expecting to see a lot more of Hawk. Azu, a Trevenant, Vigoroth, Sableye, Ice Punch, Annihilate, and Registeel. Yeah, no problem, Victor. I appreciate you uh, saying hi, homie. I appreciate you saying hi. All right. Does he bring the Hakamo? -o? Vigoroth in a Talonflame. It's in the back, chat. It's in the back. Alignment matters a lot for Lurgan here. Alignment matters a lot for Lurgan. Pokeballer is baiting. We saw a uh, certain... Oh my goodness. This matchup is always so awkward as the Talon. And Lurgan knows ball about the Talon matchup. The last game of the day is another spicy one. Yo, that's hype. That's hype. See, that kind of spoiler, I'm all for. Telling me there's spice incoming, say less. Oh, he gets there. He's double shielding the Talon. The awkward thing is, you can't really pivot out of this matchup. He'll bring in the Azu, and you just have to stay in and go for boosted flies. But he should be able to get a lot of value out of the Talon absorb energy onto the Lickitung, and then he should be in a pretty good spot. He can just keep doing one in the move for these successive flies. Yep. <laughs> he gets there. Oh, he doesn't let him. He play roughs. That's odd. Ice Beam's cheaper. Yeah, uh, Lurgan's like, what? But he just brings in Licky, and then when he brings in Sable, he just pivots hack, and then he just brick breaks it. <laughs> brick break, it does not matter if it's resisted. Just go for the debuff. It It's like one, two, three, four, five, Poison Fang chat. One, two, three, four, five, brick break. Hi, Sableye! I go for the power whip. Pokeball, it does get the shield. Does get the shield. Does he try and go for a foul play catch? Oh, he does! The foul play catch is unsuccessful. Going for the return. Hakamo. -o. All right, bulk check, chat. Bulk check on this Hakamo -o right here. Bulk check. Return. Oh, it takes it. That's a bulky boy right there. Uh, this is shields down, so he'll go for the Dragon Claw. If it was shields up, there's a argument to be made for a Brick Break. But it's shields down, so you go for, for the Dragon Claw there. Oh, he got farmed down, though. Oh, but the Lick. The Lick. Oh, man. And he tries the top left. <laughs> <laughs> nah, <laughs> that uh, that uh, muscle memory kicked in, bro. That must that a uh, GBL muscle memory kicked in. He was ready to top left. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that's awesome, Caleb. Yeah. He was so ready, bro. He's like, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Oh my goodness. That is too funny. That is too funny. Nah, if if I ever competed, I would get in trouble because I would just top left games, bro. It was the absence of, of new mechanic. All right, Mantine into Azumarill. Okay. Ooh, there's Talon in the back and Reggie. Sorry, I I dropped the charge cord. I have retained the charge cord. We're good.
All right, going for the player up into the Mantine. Alan, if it gets a shield advantage in back, will be really unfun to deal with. Yo, what's up, Harrison? A lot of the new meta is banned because the update happened, like, the night before the tournament. But mons that already have moves, like Brick Brick, Hakama, oh, which is on this team, have been used. So... Yo, we got Sarge with a 10 bomb. Thank you so much, Omi. Thanks, Harry, for all the positive energy and knowledge of the community. Love the stream together, brother. Hey, I appreciate you, Sarge. Thank you so much, Omi. Appreciate you, man. I really enjoy getting to do these. Oh, plays to a CMP tie that he does not win. Uh, we have seen a Tina. Yes, we have seen a Tina. He lets it go. Sends in the Sableye. Goes for the Airy Lace. This chip damage ooh, shields it. Interesting. Interesting. Gets a big farm. Reggie tanks better than Talon, so it makes sense to go Reggie here. I want it to be consistent, Phoenix. I don't care either way, but make it consistent. If it's consistent, we can learn it. But it's not consistent, and that's what's frustrating. In comes Annihilate into the Talon Flame, and it's looking like it's all over here. Ice Punch Bait, Lurgan Shields. Yes, we have seen a couple Water Pulse Mantines. And in this instance, Fly is super effective, so I don't mind going for the Fly. It's only when both are neutral that the flame charge fly fly pattern is preferred. Ooh, oh, he just can't make the shadow ball. And that is a day two for Lurgan. 215 15 talent. If it gets to a good CP, then it should be good. Yeah. And he gets the fly. Yeah. GG's. Water Pulse Man team. I believe it should be viable now. Yes. Vampirist versus Klorkenluder. I'm not even going to pretend I pronounced that right because I didn't. All right. Uh, Shadow Gligar, Umbreon, Reggie, Cress, Dugong, Shadow Sableye, and Klorken with Defense Deoxys. That's a rarity nowadays. That is a rarity. I Thanks, Henry, for I haven't all seen the Deoxys in a while. Knowledge you bring to Licky, the community. Love Scarm, the streams Wiggles, and Shadow brother. Cash, and Shadow Peace Sable. Sign. Heart. Dueling Shadow Sables is pretty cool. Dueling Shadow Sables is pretty cool. Yeah. Face cam froze? Oh, what the? Nah, bro. Hold on. Rip face cam. I'll fix it, Chad. I'll fix it. Hold on. Hold on. Let me unplug it and replug it back in. I am still frozen. Bro, why did my camera die? Uh, I guess we just don't do camera, because, uh, the camera apparently died in a ditch, so... <laughs> I guess we just don't do face cam for a little bit. Alright, Vampirist versus Plucking Loiter. I don't know what I did to my face cam. Yeah, I'll save it coming back, because it's a very good check to Annihilate. Okay, Dugong into defense. Deoxys, good lead for Cloak and Loiter. We see the save switch into the Cresselia, and that's going to be answered with the Lickitung. Oh, running ABA weak to Deoxys. And there's the Deoxys. This is going to be awkward, chat. This is going to be awkward. 
Moon Blast connects onto the Lickitung. Thankfully, no debuff to speak of. Just continuing to apply pressure with the body slam spam. Yeah, Vampirist has a very shiny team. All right, I'm trying to plug the face cam into a new port. We'll see if this works better, chat. We'll see if this works better. I don't think it's working better. <laughs> I don't think it's working better. I'll figure it out after stream. I'll figure it out after stream. Press. Close to the back-to-back -back grass knots here. I guess people are calling them altered just because, like, that's what the guillotine is called. <laughs> In comes the Deoxys, and yeah. Just how do you get rid of the Deoxys, bro? It's such a problem. It's such a problem. Sensing the dugong, but yikes. This is a tough one right here. This is a tough one. Deoxys is committing the shield. At the very least, the Deoxys is taking damage here. But in comes the Reggie. It's debuffed, but I mean, even when debuffed, this is still going to add up. This is still going to add up, man. It's still going to add up. But what if I add... Currently just have it as a scene. Bro, why am I still frozen? <laughs> oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Yo, that's a shiny Wigglytuff. Zap Cannon will connect. Wiggles desperately tried to get rid of this Registeel. Can Ready Steel make it to a move? Ready Steel banks the move and sends in the Dugong. Dugong trying to make it to the Icy Wind gets the Icy Wind. Hold on. There is a move banked here. What happened to the face cam? Uh, my camera died and I tried unplugging it and replugging it back in and it did not work. The question is, does he have a boost loaded as well? If he's a boost loaded, I actually don't know who wins charge stack priority between Deoxys and Reggie. It's probably Reggie. That KOs. Ah, he doesn't have a move anyway. He doesn't have a move anyway. Wow, Vampirus. That looked doomed, but he pulled it off. That's crazy. You can see the smile. He's like, oh my goodness, bro. Oh my goodness. ABA weak to Deoxys. Leads into Deoxys. Wins. <laughs> what the heck, man? That's crazy. All right, I tried re-plugging in the webcam and it's still just doing nothing. Like if I go to camera full screen, it's still just frozen, bro. It's still just frozen. All right, we'll do that and then that. Hey, we're back. Hi. It is a thousand degrees in this room, so I am hella flushed. It is actually a thousand degrees in this room right now. I'm gonna open the door. I have a big ass box light and being 
in this room with a closed door with a box light for like, what, what are we at? Three and a half hours? It's rough. It's rough. All right. Uh, now I can focus. Vampirist, cloak and loiter. Let's get through this day number one, man. Oh, he read, he read ABA week to DD again. Oh man. But this time he brought whiz cash. This time he brought whiz cash. Oh my goodness. But yeah, we are so back. This time he said, nah, I'm bringing the whiz cash to, to shut down the Reggie. I should not have lost that uh, game number one. I'm not going to lose game number two. Nicely timed. <laughs> Chair. That's funny. <laughs> I like the joke. I like the joke. It was a good joke. It was a good joke. Yeah, unfortunately, my webcam was connected to my gotcha, and, and it was also actively in, in party play, so uh, that's why it, it froze. <laughs> Attack Deoxys one-shot in Cresselia. Let's go. Talon wins CMP over Gudra? That, that might be IV dependent. It is IV dependent. That's one where if you're running the attack weight Gudra, then if if they have a high rank talent, you actually win that CMP. He sends in the Dugong here. Takes the power whip. He saves the Cresselia. Goes for the slam. I just don't think Clockin wants to lock his DD. So he's kind of fine with, with, with just letting this go. I mean, he could bring back in the DD here now, but it's not locked. At the very least. Oh, his counter got denied. That hurts. That hurts, bro. Oh, no, man. His counter got denied. And watch him get this move now. Oh, that is directly game impacting. Well, if, if Clockin loses, Clockin gets a rematch. But uh, Clockin won't lose, I don't believe. Well, the Crest is energy. Actually, the Crest is two shields and energy. This is losable for, for Clockin. This is losable for uh, Clockin. Because the Crest has energy and two shields. This is this is losable for Clockin. He gets the zap. I think he just lets this go. But if Vampirus just hard pivots Cress, I don't I don't see a way Clockin wins. He's not switching, which is interesting. Goes for the mud bomb. This doesn't KO. He shields it. I'm really surprised we haven't seen a switch into Cress yet. Because doesn't Cress have energy? Either I'm not cooking at all, or or Cress ha has energy. I'm pretty sure Cress switched out with energy. This is when I wish I could rewind without interrupting what's going on, but it would interrupt what's going on. <laughs> Pulling Double Dragon will, will be thinking at an ultra. I believe that. I believe that. He's nearly at the back-to-back -back here. You think Crest is dry? Okay. For some reason in my head, I thought that it had energy. Okay, he gets a catch. Yo, it's a best tonight. Yo, I hope your uh, travels were uh, safe. But yeah, Reggie doesn't have a shield, so Reggie loses. I'm going to go back and see. I was I was distracted with uh, trying to solve the webcam issue, so... Did Cress have energy, bro? All right, where's Cress at energy-wise? Okay, Cress grass nods. If he just switches right here, then he has no energy. Oh, Cress was dry. Cress was dry. For some reason in my head, I thought that he didn't throw that move. For some reason in my head, I thought that he didn't throw that move, and he just had that move, but he didn't have that move. Never mind. Ignore me. Yeah, I thought he had a whole grass knot on there, but he did not. He threw that energy. I stand corrected. 
All right, Defense Deoxys into the Shadow Gligar. Oh, got you, Mini Coke. Yeah, the uh, Minty Shiny Registeel is a pretty cool one. It's like a boost and dip. Overall good vacation? Awesome. Let's go. That's hype. In comes the Licky. Answer with the Reggie. And it's Dugong for the cash in the back. Oh, no. Yeah. In my uh, distracted state, for some reason, I thought that move wasn't thrown. But that move was thrown. Thoughts on, on the upcoming battles? Well, Sarge, I have a, I have a, uh, a surprise for y'all about day two. I have a surprise for y'all about day two. Body slam after body slam. Yo, uh, go for a sick undercharge here of the Zap Cannon right now, Vampirist. Okay. I think that's too many bubbles. Yep. Like, he gets a little bit, but if he had, like, a bubble or two less, that would have been a win. That would have been, like, way more fast moves. He is looking to pivot now and save the Reggie. So he is hard reading Wigglytuff then. He's hard reading Wigglytuff. Yeah, uh, still a decent undercharge for sure. I'm just very critical of Reggie on Licky undercharges because as a Reggie user, that's a matchup you play hundreds of times. So that is one where precision is often almost expected at this level. Goes for the bolt. Dugong lives it due to the debuff. Dugong actually lives these counters and gets there. That's fair. That's fair, Pika. <laughs> that's fair. Well, hopefully you are able to get one from raids at some point or a, a trade. Sends in the cash to snipe. That's a nice play by Clockin. Just getting energy advantage. But the Gligar has so much stored energy here. This is this is brutal. This is absolutely brutal. I believe this is the final battle of day one. No debuff either. Oh boy. Now this is, this is still technically day one. This is still technically day one. Yeah, uh, skull debuffs are, are actually fake. This tourney is crazy. <laughs> In comes the Deoxys. And I mean, Deoxys just has no way of winning this. Goes for the Bolt to not debuff himself, but yeah, this is this is done. This is done. This is done. Well, they're having fun with it. They're having fun with it. All right. I believe that was... Oh, it's not the final battle of day one. I stand corrected, chat. There's more. I thought that was the final battle of day one. There's more. It's a Shadow Cradilly! Yo! Hold on! We have a we have a Shadow Cradilly from Arrow Bubble. Reggie, Talon, Azu, Cress, Annihilate, and Shadow Cradilly versus Safiel with the Oh boy, that team is looking mighty uh weak to energy from Cradilly, bro. With Charger Bug, Azu, Annihilate, Licky, Talon, and Cash. This, if there was ever a team that could get Cradillied, it's this team. This team is looking mighty Cradilliable. Uh that's now a word. I have decided it so. Licky into the ape. Yeah, massive W. Benching the Dilly game one, which is Pretty good because Safiel over prepped for it by bringing Licky and Ilave Charger. He benched the waters in Talon. 
So that's actually kind of a nice read by Arrow. Just just saying, you know what? He's going to be so scared of this Cordelli that I can actually just bench it and use it as bench pressure. All right, he baits. Licky needs a bait to win the ones. Unless you have the, like, giga attack weight angry ape. Does the field decide to shield? He does decide to shield. He will make the whip. Yo, uh, catch the whip on the talon for science. Oh, he tried it. He tried it. Responding with the charger. Had to bait out the charger. Oh, the perfect timing. Oh, thank you so much. I'll, uh, hold on one second. Oh, picks up the KO as well. Like, what do you do against this Talon? You send in the ape? Oh, no. Oh, no. Hey. Uh, remember that 3-2-2 two, two pacing? Re remember that 3-2-2 two, two pacing? It's about to be so real here. He just lets this through. He's like, bro, Azu wins this. You're not, you're, you're not beating Azu. Be extremely for real right now. <laughs> yeah. Be extremely, f oh my, uh, mic arm is struggling a little bit. All right, we're good. We're back. The uh, mic arm decided it would be a uh, very good time to just slowly start collapsing towards the ground. Oh, the switch into the licky. Oh, can't quite get the catch. Can't quite get the catch. The power whip will land. Sends in the Annihilate. Gets the counter down. And that's a GG trainer. Arrow bubble. Scares off the... Uh, scares off the waters and talent with the Shadow Credilly. It doesn't actually bring it. Big sigh of relief with game number one. Come on, bring the Dilly game too. Talon Flame into Charge a Bug. And the Dilly's in the back! Let's go! The Dilly's in the back, chat! The Dilly's in the back. Baiting with an X Scissor. Grabbing the shield from Arrow Bubble. The Dilly's in the back, chat. Save switches into his own talent. This is actually awkward for Arrow Bubble. His arrow didn't bring the Azu. He is trying to... Yeah, Addy calls that. That's awkward. He does win charge attack priority. That's very important here. It's very important. His Dilly, of course, has no ability to farm down a Talon. It is no ability to farm down a Talon. So you kind of have to bring in the Annihilate, which is uncomfortable. Because he is going to be two off the fly, and it's and it's not worth it to risk throwing on charge attack priority. But you will have to commit the shield. You might be able to counter down though. Yeah, dilly gaming right now, boys. Dilly gaming. Oh, he does get that counter. Oh, that's going to be beautiful. Gets the counter down, leaves with energy. That is quite nice. That's quite nice right there. That is some good stuff, chat. That's some good stuff. In comes the Azu going for the shadow ball. Oh boy. Oh boy, chat. Dilly gaming. Dilly gaming. Dilly dilly chat. Sends in the charger bug. I have really bad news for uh Mr. Opponent here. Oh, that charger timing is beautiful by Arrow Bubble. Uh X Scissor might be super effective, but it does not KO. It does not KO. You will need two X Scissors, and you're gonna get outpaced. He doesn't have the back-to-back, -back, so he can even throw one bullet seed and then the rock slide here. He can even throw one bullet seed in the rock slide. Oh, he throws it right away, just saying, you know what? I don't want to risk it. He is just getting rid of this thing. He's just getting rid of this thing. In comes the Azu Force of Feel. Oh, no. Can it make the ice beam? It does. Uh-oh. Uh, this is suddenly bad. This is suddenly bad. 
He could have over farmed one more. He didn't. Now it gets KO'd. It's all up to Annihilate to try and KO the Azu. He's going to have to over farm as much as he possibly can here. Over farming. Going for the Shadow Ball. It all comes down to this. Can this knock out the XL Azu? Shadow Ball into the Azumarill. We see the pause. That's the game. It KOs an Arrow Bubble and Shadow Credilly make day two at Utrecht. Okay, Arrow Bubble clutches it. Whoo! Oh my goodness. The Dilly lives, chat. The Dilly lives. The Dilly lives. All right, chat. Before we hop into day number two, I have a confession. Ah, uh, yes, Gert. I have a confession to make. I am aware of what happens on day number two. An unnamed individual goes on a 17-0 run to become Utrecht special event regional champion a feat so impressive that for day two i actually made the longest video i have ever made on this channel a 35 minute video covering the greatest day two losers bracket run the world has ever seen is going live right now for your viewing pleasure. A 17-0 absolute domination. Wiping the floor with the competition. Day two, the longest video I've ever made on the channel. It's not being live streamed. It's in a video. You want to see day two? Click down there. Watch it. It's an amazing video. I worked on it all day before getting to here. I think y'all are going to love it. So go check out that video. Day two is live right now. It's an absolute banger. It's an absolute banger. It is stream is done, but there's a 35 minute video of day two that literally just dropped. If y'all want to see 17 wins in a row. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But yeah, uh... Go check that out. Streams ending. 35 minute video. Longest I've ever posted. On the absolute baller run in day two. Alright. Be easy chat. Alright. Peace.